Hallelujah. Listen. Listen to me. There is nobody who ever won the Olympics by mistake. Are you getting me? Those illusions do not exist. Every dimension of success, be it spiritual, be it financial, in every sense is strategic and intentional. Hallelujah. Nobody, 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 there is no successful person who cannot show you the formula, who cannot show you the pathway he followed. Hallelujah. You may not, you may not see the full picture right now. But brothers and sisters, let me tell you, it will not take long. There is a kind of grace that when you sit under, it implicates you. It will not take long. Something will burst open. It's like you are blowing a balloon. You know how you keep blowing a balloon. A time comes, it doesn't matter what it is. It just cannot take it. And I perceive in my spirit that we are getting to that point. I've been singing this song. It's not a special number. Sometimes some songs help you articulate seasons. 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 Hallelujah. I sleep with this song. I wake up with it. It's my prayer. And I know that there are certain people. Some mantles have long waited for you. You see. And, and there, are, there are shoes that many of us will step into. You will be amazed. I hope you know that I'm not a politician. When I stand to speak, I'm not. This is not a manifesto. This is a communication of what the spirit is saying. There are certain levels of graces that people will step into. Just know this, brothers and sisters. There is no mistake about success at any level. There is no mistake. There is no mistake. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Please pray in one minute and say, Lord, no distraction tonight. Give me such an unusual ability to listen. An unusual ability to be focused inside and outside even if you have to sit on the fence even if you have to stand don't worry just pay your price now only a foolish athlete complains during the times of discipline only a failure looks for comfort during the time of training the bible says there's no man that worried who will entangle himself with civilian affairs humble yourself and submit yourself to the dealings of the spirit and see how mighty you will become I don't care what the limitations are take your eyes away from them hallelujah now I want you to sing this song as a prophecy sing it to yourself I'm on my way. Listen, nobody in your family may have crossed that line before. But as far as you know, God is leading you. There is a path. It says, There is a path which no fowl knoweth. The whelps of the lion has not gotten there. Some of you, as ordinary as you look, just let the word of God finish its course in your life. I'm on my way on my way i'm on my way to better day no matter what the failure has been no matter what the limitations are prophesy challenge your fears Let me talk to you. The man who wrote this song, do you know how the song came about? He was blind. Are you hearing me? He was blind. And one time a doctor looked at him and said, this is your condition. I can do something about it. And he was surprised. You mean my eyes can open? 
and he began to pray and talk to the Lord and the Holy Spirit told him the meaning of that is that your status is about to change yeah that's how he wrote the song he was not just a musician that so this can change that once upon a time everybody looks at you in your family and thinks you are just one of those bunch of failures but you come up from another route that no man has seen and you tell them I may look small now but there is a hand that is holding me I may have made all kinds of mistakes in the past it's easy to judge me by my mistakes of the past but there is a hand holding me it's true that Jesus died but he only died for three days he didn't die forever while others were talking about his death he had already resurrected status is changing there's no more decline on my way that the doors that refuse to open to you must open in this season there's no more decline Father, in the name of Jesus, take us higher. We are praying this from the depths of our heart. Take every one person from glory to glory, from grace to grace, from grace to grace, from grace to grace. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I'm led to lead you in just one prayer. Say, Lord, make me successful. I don't know if you've ever prayed that prayers. Pray it, not for your neighbor. Just say it, make me don't say I want to be successful. That's not a wise prayer. Make me. Please just pray. Whether you understand what I'm saying or not, just follow what we're doing. Take your eyes away from what you are not. Take your eyes. Just say, Lord, make me successful. By every standard. We're on our way, on our way. Hallelujah. 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 Seven years ago, I said this. These were my exact words. I said, We will all be successful. And the beautiful part is that we will all know ourselves. Seven years ago. I said this and I have not stopped saying it. This is a revolution. You may not look like it. But let me tell you, don't play games with the Holy Spirit. Once he holds you, he will make a wonder. He turned the lives of ordinary men. Forget about what men are saying about you. My Bible is full of the archives of the faithfulness of God hallelujah some of us ladies may be standing here you look weak you look like a failure forget about it just let my God the one that can pick a man from a dunghill pick a man from a dunghill one more time say Lord make me successful Against all odds, Kapala Kataya. When all is said and done, I will be standing. 
Some of you have been named like Jabez. That all you've brought to those around you is sorrow. But don't give up. Don't give up. It doesn't take long. In spite of the limitations. I may not know what to do. But I submit myself. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Please be seated. God bless you. Let's get to the business of tonight. The training may be hard today, but you will thank me tomorrow. Believe me. This is it's not it's not a way that has just been discovered. It's always been there. But the road has been narrow because very few people care to follow it. See, I'm telling you, listen to what I'm saying. It doesn't matter what level you are now. It doesn't matter what is wrong. Just pay attention to God. Give him time and see what he will make out of your life. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Tonight, I'm teaching really more as a life coach, if I would put it that way. I want to talk to us about our lives and our destinies, and I want to challenge us. The focus of my communication tonight is to help us embrace transitions, but then um, my talk is to everybody, but my challenge mostly is to the men this night because you must be successful this year. Say amen. amen. So before we start, all the gentlemen rise. Aside from our elders, prof, please sit down. But every gentleman rise. Don't laugh. Rise. We are not playing games, please. The teaching has started. If you are not sure what you are, stand up. Hallelujah. Say after me in the name of Jesus. I will be successful. Regardless of where I am now. Regardless of what I do not know now. I make up my mind. That my world will celebrate me. I refuse to fail. It's a decision that I've made. I refuse to fail. I declare. That my family, my sphere of influence, and God will be proud of me. God bless you. Please sit down. 1 Corinthians 13 verse 1. Please, everybody write. Especially the men. Whether you are standing, even if you are sitting on a tree, get a piece of paper this night and write. You know, I've told us when you come, especially for those of us who are new, please get a good notebook or something um, make sure you are writing one of the things that we have to come to terms with in life is the dynamic nature of life please listen carefully pay attention the dynamic nature of life life is in phases and at certain periods in our lives we are compelled to experience what we call transitions Everybody say transitions. Um, in, in biology or primary science, they teach about what we call the life cycle of insects, right? It starts from what? Egg, larva. Some of you got zero. You still will get zero today after many years. From egg, some of you are saying adult. How can it be that? Hmm? And so we see that there are what? Transitions. And at every stage, the rule is different. Hallelujah. At every stage, 
now for us humans there are phases of transitions you start from a, a baby when you are born down to that early stage of childhood right and then you get into teenage and from teenage people say young adult I've, I've told you my position in those things i don't believe an adult is anybody who is not a child whether you are young or old is irrelevant adults and from adults it continues like that and at the end of your life you can now look back and see whether you spent your life impacting people or being a liability to humanity so one of the challenges watch this and i truly thank god for giving me this paradigm as a person and giving us the opportunity to communicate this as a ministry what i call a balanced growth my obsession has always been to bring balance to the body of christ right i attack violently any trace of imbalance in the body of christ maybe it's because of the apostolic office but i hate an exaggeration of truth and one dimension of life above and beyond the other right so I don't want to raise people who are spiritual, tongue-talking people, but are broke failures in life. And on the other hand, I don't want to raise people who will build houses, be mighty people, and go to hellfire. Are you getting me? I don't want a situation where all the brothers are praying in tongues, but every time when you are going to somebody's house to get married, the father looks at you and says, Young man, what is your name? Say, my name is, is Christian. Say, huh? What, what, what difference does that make? What are you here for? You say, I saw a flower. I say, you, a flower. Where? You know? But there are essentials that if we do not address, you see, part of the spirit of leadership, not just being a man of God, leadership is to discern transitions and to bring relevant teachings that build people strategically according to the seasons of their lives. Are you following me now? If I go to a congregation where I'm talking to professionals, there is my approach, my examples, right? And my communications become different. If I'm teaching in a children's class, you can't sit down in a children's class and tell them about relationships and marriage and the rest. You are, you are spoiling those children. You are supposed to be teaching them how to press into God, you know, all of that. And you cannot be talking to, um, say, grand people of 70, 80 years. And you are talking to them and, you know, saying certain things so part of leadership and and this is the entire scope of what we call in theology homiletics not just the art of teaching but the ability to communicate right we live in a generation where you must make sure that the questions you are trying to answer have been asked there are many preachers who are as, who are answering questions nobody is asking so while it is true that we must remain aligned with what the spirit is doing we must also be able to transit the body of christ the church is an institution right an institution is a platform that is able to mold people's mindsets and ideologies and part of the job of preachers is to be able to help the body of christ become successful and relevant even societally i was saying it in the leaders meeting and i said look my project this year among other things is to trust god that as this rain falls rain cannot fall on a land and you don't see anything growing with time is that true so that rain will fall on us in the name of jesus but then just just prophesying and saying the name of jesus be successful is a mirage you've done it for years nothing happened success is not an impartation there is nowhere in the bible where you impart success you can you can receive impartation of wisdom you can impart all of this but the bible says they are life to those who find them not to those who wish praise the lord are we there 13 verse 11 not 1 11 when i was a child that means when i was at a season of my life called childhood are you following me now certain things happen in my life at that point number one i did what my conversations were childish i spoke like a child and and nobody you don't rebuke a child if we call one of these our little ones now and comes up and we say say something and he says i want sweet you can't flog him he's speaking as a child that is the reality within his age range 
and it helps us know that the child is correct if you call a little child and looks at you and says where is my wife automatically you know he has been watching nonsense either house helps or people have have have, have raped his mind and transited him to realms that is not supposed to have gotten there are you getting what i'm saying now so there are seasons i speak like a child so you know a child first by conversation second i understood mindset i had the mentality of a child my understanding was childish some group of um, some of my little children in this place they always come to hug me after service so they wrote me a letter they all came together wrote different letters and gave me and I made a mistake and I carried my big mouth and I said I was going to reply the letter and these children will not let me rest so today I decided to reply the letter and give them after the service if you write me a letter and I don't reply it you, you as an adult you can't come and pin me I tell you look my brother the reality but these ones don't care they wrote you a letter and they don't care whether you are traveling to the world and back if we tell them now next week all of you come here you are going to we are carrying you to where a place where we we'll go and play or even father christmas or father february or father whatever is coming here they will come dressed and happy they don't want to know where you get the money from they don't care the cost dimension of life does not apply to them they don't think cost they only think reality you told me you will buy me sweet whether you are stealing the money whether the shop is open or not where is my suite you said you are buying me a car where is it even if he doesn't have food to eat at that point he believes that the car is coming so i understood like a child right number three i thought like a child so those things are they characterize certain seasons but then the trouble with many people and especially young people is that we do not realize that life does not remain at the same plane. Whether you are prepared or not, sooner or later transitions begin in our lives. Right? I'll never forget going somewhere and I saw a place that I used to go many years ago. I used to just go there and joke around and play and I said, Jesus Christ, who would have known? that that little boy playing around you see that see the guys see some of you touching your face and saying this is beard am i joking when did he welcome to transition i remember i remember when i was when i was in secondary school i think it was just one or two they were these zealous guys that really wanted to start having mustache. They were so they were excited about it we had some people who were very hairy and then all of that but then these guys, you look like an insult. And you see them sit down and everybody trying to make his voice deep. How are you? And all of that. And now, <laughs> you still see people do it, Abby. All these boys, when they say, how far? They just try to make sure that they, they want to force themselves into certain seasons. But then you get to those seasons and you are tired and you wish. There are times that you go to Bab and you say, make sure he's... Um, a nice barbie in this and make sure it's the type that will attract the ladies but now where you go you say are you there as they are barbie they say what well, just just keep lowering it. you don't even know what you don't know what the name of the style you want just say start start whatever it looks like as you proceed i'll tell you whatever adjustments you make some of you even finish barbie and they say cap say cap what difference does it mean carving transition are you following me now? Now, whether you like it or not, you will come to the end of a phase in your life and demand will be placed to transit to another dimension. Are you getting what I'm saying? This is very, very important. Our inability to understand the laws of transition and the demands that we need to make will produce failures. You can succeed at a season in your life and transit and start failing at once for instance you can succeed as a child saying foolish things and going scot-free 
and then when you transit and forget you have grown what you said yesterday and people kept quiet you will say it tomorrow and they will slap you is that true because a transition has happened a mistake you made and god kept quiet as if he didn't see it you make it two years later you will pay for it dearly so our ability to understand transitions and the demands they bring is what i want to share very briefly there are five areas that we must focus on to be called successful in our lives never forget these five areas number one is your spiritual life the first area you must focus your spiritual life talks about your relationship with Jesus Christ your relationship with Jesus Christ your passion about the things of God your passion about the house of God your passion about spiritual activities your, your, your passion to know God and love him more. A season comes in your life where if you don't pay attention to your spiritual life, it will start messing up your life. Now, look at me. Our generation of young people, we thank God for what God is doing right now, but most of our parents did not focus on spiritual growth. What they focused on was academic or intellectual success. Is that true? So if I have a master's today, even if I'm drinking beer, I'm okay. Right? So if I come and meet this lady, come. I meet her and I say, I want to marry you. And they say, how is the guy? I say, he's nice. Is he working? Yes. Where? He's working with uh, civil defense. I say, wow, this is okay. He's nice, went to school, this and that. He drinks, but eh, just touches it once in a while. And so once, listen, that does not look like an issue. Every other thing was a very serious issue. Does he drink? Hey, once in a while, smoking. I only saw him smoke once. Abba, it's okay now. It's better than how many people. And then, we are very happy. That person is called successful because he seems to have something doing. But I'm showing you, sit down, bless you, my dear, that you must focus on spiritual success. Is is a non-negotiable index to measure success and growth. Your relationship with Jesus Christ, your understanding of spiritual things. I will never, never in my life give my daughter to anybody who is not born again and filled with the Holy Spirit and serious with God with traceable evidences of transformation. Traceable. Traceable. You, you not... You can't, you can't say you love God and then we can't see the sign. God is, not a, God is not a herbalist. You love God, you've worked with him, there must be a traceable evidence. Number two, finance. Everybody say finance. All the men say finance. Areas that you must focus on in your life if you mean business with success. I don't care how you pray in tongues, pray to the roof and come down. If you do not pay attention to your finance, it may not show now, but as transition happens, you will see the gravity of your not paying attention to it. Are you getting what I'm saying? Wealth. Finance defines wealth, abundance, financial freedom. Very important. I was talking to the leaders and I said, Kai, we need to do something about our brothers. Many of them love God but they are broke. It's not an insult. If we don't do that, other people will come and be carrying our ladies. Because when it's time to marry, God has said, move forward. There is a Red Sea in front of you. Right? The Red Sea. Is, and that Red Sea now is, is, is not Red Sea of demons. You have settled those ones. You left Egypt already. You left Egypt flawlessly. But right now you are standing before a Red Sea. Praise the Lord. If you don't pay attention to your finances, you will be a failure in life. And I tell you this, I give it to you as a guarantee. Number three, family life. Many people learn family life as they get married. When things go wrong, he looks at the wife and says, what's going on? 
So what's going on? We are messing up. Say, really, what did you learn about family? Say, I didn't learn anything. I only got married. And unfortunately, the institutions that are supposed to build and equip people in this area are failing. Either as a result of negligence. I told you that the church is a school. The church is also an institution. Praise the Lord. There are many people who are getting married. They don't even know what they are doing. They don't understand the implication. Is that true? I was talking to some gentlemen and I said, guys, when do you want to get married? All of them said various dates and all of that. And I said, convince me that your home will not be a disaster. They made a lot of very intelligent statements. Okay, Jesus, they've handed over, the, or they'll hand over the family to Jesus Christ, which is good. Right? Which is good, but not all. Okay, they'll do something, get a job, good, but not all. Number three, don't forget that in family life, you are not living with animals. You are living with human beings who have a will. How many of you have roommates that you were praying that last session should end? Christians, you love God. You were so happy when you finished the last exam. The roommate said, I'm finally going. Say, I'm, I'm, I wish you a Merry Christmas. You've started wishing Christmas from 2nd of December. I wish you a Merry Christmas. In other words, get out of my room and my life. All of them. All the doors. Just leave. So if you do not understand the principles of human relations, what convinces you that because you saw a beautiful girl or a, beauty, or a handsome guy? I like the guy. What of you? What do you think? Whether you like the lady or you like the guy, sooner or later, see, during relationship, a lot happens because it's just two of you. When you get married, relatives come in, born again or not born again. Are you seeing now? Transition. So many other factors that you are not aware of coming. You get married to the man and all of a sudden, the man is yawning and pouring saliva. And you are saying, my Jesus Christ, my Prince Charming. I turned down 30 guys for this gentleman and what is this? The first shocker. Welcome to the reality of transitions. You may not have the opportunity to see that. Right? So, the, the trouble is not, I'm not, I don't have a problem with your success at this level. Because you have mastered the level. But when you transit, you will not use the old formula for the new level. Are you getting me? So I want to share with you that you must know how to transit with life. Otherwise, you will be shocked. As a pastor, the way you pastor a church of 12 members, 14 members, is very different. When 50 members come, out of those 50, there's at least 4 or 5 wicked people. They have, they've been... Your, your, your leadership style must be able to accommodate the mixed multitude that is coming. That means the way you do ministry for 12 people, I love them, I trust them, they are all, they will die for me. 50 people will not die for you, I guarantee you. Right? When 100 people come, your leadership style and your understanding must change. When a crowd comes, everything must change. Same thing. When you get a job, as a JJC, they just gave you a job. There is an approach. The moment they promote you, certain things are expected. Right? As a senior staff, there are some things you do that your corporation or whatever will not be able to take from you. Are you getting what I'm saying? When God began to transit Moses in the anointing, it was simple disobedience of striking a rock instead of speaking to it that stopped Moses from entering the promised land. To you, it may look like that, is, that was too hard a punishment. But compared to what standard? Are you getting me? Was it not Aaron and Miriam that said certain things and they were punished severely? Look at Zechariah, right? Zechariah said uh, this and that and that. He insulted Gabriel and they shut his mouth. The same Mary asked questions. How shall these things be? And the angel didn't rebuke her. He took time to explain. Because he was dealing with people at two different levels. Are you following what I'm saying? Family life. You can make or ruin the future of yourself and the people God will bring under your care 
if you do not understand the principles of family life. Number four, very quickly, your career or your professional life, you must pay attention to it or generally speaking, your assignment. You can pray in tongues, you can have a good home. If you're a liability in your workplace, you're a liability in your office, you're a liability in your corporation, they will check you out no matter what kind of tongues you are praying. Are you getting my point? So you must focus on the area of your career, the area of your professional life. Praise the Lord. And then your assignment, generally speaking. And the last area is the area of relationships and associations. Five areas you must pay attention as you transit, even in this season. What's number one? What's number two? What's number three? What's number four? Number five. Listen, if you pay attention to all these areas and you succeed in them, you will become a balanced person. Anointed, wealthy, right? Blessed with the gift of associations, you can impact people, you can leave a legacy. This is what God wants for us. And my job is to help us. I don't want an imbalance where we are anointed, we are casting out devils, but then we are tied down financially. Or we are succeeding financially, but we are on our way to hell. Right? Or our families and marriages are failing. Listen, any pastor, any man of God that does not pay attention to these areas will have a chaos in his family. That's why God can never trust certain ministries with certain levels of people. Because we must sustain the ability to balance it. What good is it? Listen to me. If stand up Zoe and Ken. Assuming both of them are husband and wife. Huh? Husband, wife. How will you love a crowd of tongue-talking people who taught themselves in the morning at home? Wife comes wearing glasses because the man really injured her eyes that morning. And they came and you are full of all kinds of people. And you believe that you are rising but there's all kinds of fight happening everywhere. And you say turn to your neighbor and you find out that people are not turning to their wives. They are turning to some other people. Right? A husband comes, he sits in front, his wife is down there, the children are somewhere there. They form a triangle in the church because they don't want to see any, they don't want to even come near themselves. You are a failed leader. When that happens, bless you, please sit down. Now, for some of us, like I said, some of the things that I'm teaching may not seem to make all the sense for us. Why? Because of the level that we are in life. I will be touching on some things that will challenge you. But the shock is that transitions are instant. That means you must prepare for a phase before you get there. You don't prepare when you get there because transitions are instant. One moment you write your final exam and you wake up to find out you're a graduate. Whether you believe it or not, you are. You dance and rejoice, but then a transition has occurred. Praise the Lord. You'll be arguing, I want to marry. Oh God, my husband must come. In the name of Jesus Christ, I, I smoke him out of everywhere he is. He must come to me. All kinds of prayers, we apply different skills to, to force breakthroughs into our lives. Now the man comes and before you know it, you have become a wife. And you check and find out that it's six months. You are tired of cooking. Oh God, what is this? You did not brace up for the transition. You were more excited about the motions. You were more excited about living singleness than being a wife. You were more excited about wearing a ring than sustaining a good family. Two months into your wedding, you are tired. That's why you see people slap one another and they are tired. Are you doing no? Are you doing no? Well, let's go. There must be an understanding. And then, there are many Christians, and some of you who work, and I'm, I'm sure our daddy prof here will testify, and many other people. Many Christians fail, fail in their professional lives. Is that true? They are the ones they downsize. They are the ones they sack. They are the ones who are ineffective. They are the ones who are always doing the wrong thing. You give them a paper to present, they make a, a, a mess of it because they don't prepare. They are waiting for the Holy Ghost to prepare the paper and they come up, is it your turn? Yes. And they come and make a mess of nonsense. 
And then we get angry. One of the worst problems of Africa is the belief that our problems are entirely demonic. It's one of the worst things that has happened to the continent of Africa. An easy explanation to failure. Praise the Lord. So your boss looks at you and queries you. And you say, while he was talking, I saw a spirit behind him. As if what he was saying was a lie. You have been ineffective. They now call you in a board meeting and say, Mr. Man, we have all seen what you have done. We want to promote you, but it doesn't look like you have been effective. Praise the Lord. Very important. How many Christians have given God an opportunity to bless them and increase them? How many Christians are CEOs of multi-million and multi-billion dollar corporations? Very few. Because many Christians embrace an average life and we are happy about it. It's God speaking to us. And we keep talking and say they made an unbeliever the CEO. You will stand side by side with that person and you will not be able to deliver in, in even if the standards were lowered. Praise the Lord. Am I challenging us? How many Christian students pass WAEC? Let's be very sincere. How many Christian students pass JAM? People play around and then two days to the exam, they are just smiling around. How many Christian young people get employed one or two years after graduation? Because the biggest problem with Africa is the transfer of blames to demons. You can't sue demons to court. You can't summon them before a judge. So, we, we do not concentrate on our assignments and on our, our professional lives. How many men of God are able to deliver? They call and say, Lord, bring a crowd. They, they understand nothing about leadership principles. They think all there is is the ability to lay hands. No, sir. No, sir. Organizational skills, zero. Leadership skills, zero. Communication skills, zero. Right? Crisis management skills, zero. And now you want God to give you a crowd. You want to go on air. Is God speaking to us? And then our relationships and associations. People skills. If you fail in these five areas in life, then you are truly a failure. I don't care whether you got first class in school. If your spiritual life is dead and all other areas are dead, I guarantee you life will whip you in a way that you will be shocked. And I want us to be successful. Status is changing. It's no more decline. You're on your way to better death. It's not magical. It's a process. Status is changing. It's no more decline. On my way to better day. Please write very quickly. Why many people are failures or mediocres in life. Right. Why? The reasons. Reasons why many people, especially young people, end up being failures and mediocres in life. There is a reason. There is a reason why many people end up being failures. They go to school, they give their best, they graduate, they do everything, and then they step out of life with a lot of expectancy. Just like there are some of us seated here right now. We are angry at life because what they told you is not what you are seeing. I don't have a job. There's nothing happening. Every lady I go to, I want to marry you, she says, I'm sorry. Why are you sorry? Why are you sorry? Am I dead? Am I not alive? He said you are living but it's like you are dead. Number one. And this is where I want to get our attention now. Gentlemen, pay attention. No pinching around. Be very serious. Number one is mindsets. The first reason why people become failures or mediocres in life is their mindset. Everybody say mindset. Lack of mental transition. Lack of mental transition. They are growing older 
but their minds are not transiting with the new seasons to understand the demands the responsibilities lack of mental transition first corinthians 13 verse 11 said when i was a child spoke like a child understood like a child and he said i thought like a child but then he said something he said now that i am a man what happened he said i lay aside i throw away childish things so many of us have become men and women but we have still embraced the mindset that you had when you were 11 years old is that true so although you are married you are finding out that you are a big child there is a lot of childishness happening in your office you are seeing childishness that inability to transit mentally to match the transition that is happening in your life mindsets and there are three aspects we deal with under mindset number one is dependency mentality dependency mentality oh god is speaking to us if you pay attention to what i'm saying the rain will fall on you truly dependency mentality everyone say it one more time dependency mentality because although it is scriptural can i have one gentleman come my brother if this guy is my son watch this if this guy is my son i have a scriptural injunction right as a father to take care of him is that true to take care of him to make sure that he eats well make sure he loves god and all the responsibilities but as the transition begins to occur in his life this child is now becoming an adult is that true that means that there must be a transition but by the time this gentleman is 30 years 25 years and he's still having a dependency mentality that's why we have so many men they are married but their mothers and fathers tell them everything to do because they the transition happened but in their minds they didn't transit are you getting what i'm saying mommy what do i cook for him today he say what did you cook yesterday say say more say oh yeah try gary today see that so that inability to stand to an extent brothers and sisters there are many people who get married and they create a room for them in their parents house I'm not talking of a large compound with many houses because the man cannot do anything mommy prepares a room for him he now carries his wife later on the wife is pregnant she gives birth and they are all here it's a terrible thing it's a cause are you hearing what i'm saying so dependency mentality they were giving you pocket money maybe five thousand ten thousand per month and now you graduate and five years after graduation you start frowning at your father he doesn't understand why the bad look has happened because he expected that you would have realized they gave you scholarship you were blowing it buying books buying uh, buying boots buying trainers buying everything after all my father he gave birth to me right and now you are finished and your father says um i think you should be considering moving say moving to where is it not you who is supposed to build a house for me? The Bible says this and that and that and that. Shame on many young people. Because although they are old, we are quick to look for women. But very slow to transit. You see a lady, ah, I like this lady. And where are you? What are your plans? That transition, dependency mentality. Hallelujah. To an extent that you see a young man some of you are looking at me as i'm talking to you now you are in this category you are seated and you get up shamefully very shamefully and you call your old parents from their pension and you say popsy yeah can you transfer something to me and he says okay things are not going on i says it's always like that you're always and you cut the call and you are raking and your mediocre friends are massaging say calm down please calm down calm down you know old people with this their thing and your mother is crying on phone at home and say my son it's not like i don't love you what is all that eh? it's not even this and that and that and that i beg jare send me some money and then they go and borrow money and as old as you are they send money you use ten thousand to buy cake and celebrate 30 years and it doesn't occur to you 
that there is a transition is God speaking to us tonight oh you must grow in the name of Jesus Christ you may not like me now but I will come to your homes and you will thank me for it see let me tell you the person who loves you is the person who tells you the truth he may challenge you but it will make you a better person some of us we have this over dependence on everybody your father's first responsibility to, is to his wife not you to his wife not you hallelujah to an extent that there are many people who are i know people who are working but still want their parents to give them money they are working collecting salary hundred thousand they collect the salary and keep and say mommy how far dependency mentality you become a parasite to everybody there are people who everywhere you go when they see you you are tired you call people they say well, he's not around and he's the person you are looking for who is talking he picks the phone and says please John is not around he says ah, are you not John? He says, ah, he's not around he calls the call because there is a parasite mentality right as a young man you don't learn you don't want to learn how to cook and you don't want to be rich a paradox you want to go to the restaurant every time and then you want to remain broke if there's nothing there learn how to cook if you can't cook anything learn rice beans swallow it's a good start it's a good start is God speaking to us please take what I'm saying very seriously because if you don't sooner or later you will see that it will whip you seriously I counsel a lot of people and when couples come their number one problem is the inability as I hear them speak I still see children speaking because there is that it has happened in church but mentally there is that dependency mentality so the man looks at his wife and says mommy she looks at the husband and says daddy and then there is a mommy daddy fight going on because everybody is depending on who why didn't you wake me I need to be at the office by 7 30 why didn't you wake me or oh, guy you are married your mother woke you when you were going to jail one five o'clock that old woman will get up and put water for you and do everything and iron your clothes you are married to an extent that some of us are pests to our roommates office mates you never cook you don't ever say anything about cooking bros you don't do just step into people's rooms and when they see you coming they say lock the door lock the door this parasite is coming your life is not supposed to be that way hey, hey look hold on please i hope as we are laughing we are listening your life is not supposed to be like that a parasitic life everybody runs away from you because you have a dependency mentality you never have the opportunity to manage situations you have headache you are running around expecting everybody to say you you see that and and the ugly part is when it happens for men it makes it's okay if it happens for women but a matured man and another matured man oh boy sorry oh you have headache what is that praise the lord the guy is not feeling fine who should tell you to get up and go to a clinic it's not like there's no money we are used to dependency mentality mommy where are you come and take me to the hospital you are 30 years dependency mentality so that's what happens when that kind of man gets married his children can be sick and he will look at them like that because he's not used to taking responsibilities dependency no food at home eh? so what no food that's it now they sack a man from work 10 years later he has not gotten another job and he doesn't care he said what happened you know the way nigeria railway corporation that time we we're working railway i was working in nitel i was working in this and he's qualified the cvs are there ah, you hear me this night bless you please mindsets dependency mentality you must get out of it. 
do make up your mind not to be a pest and a parasite to anybody say i am a blessing not a parasite say it i am a blessing not a parasite when you were small when you visit your uncle once you are going they they carry smarties and conflicts and milk and bone vita. Now you go and meet them. They are old and you see that. You say, Uncle, I'm going. No, he said, May the Lord bless you. I had you. You are a graduate. Now, where did you even serve? I served in Ondo. And immediately you finish. They say, ah, So they gave you all those 20,000 allowances. Yeah, those things they gave us. And now you finish and you are eyeing your uncle. You are angry because you are expecting him to gather everything and give you. See, I'm not blaming you. I'm challenging it out of you. It does not live by default. You force it to go out. That mentality will never live because you are growing older. I'm telling you, you must make a conscious effort. I made up my mind that the last money I would ever collect from my father was when I was in 100 level. And that was it. I took responsibility over my life. There's no job. Why? In Nigeria now, all this federal government is not true. It's not true. What effort have you made? Dependency mentality. So you see students practice this. You give them assignments, they never do it. Right? They are always waiting for a night to submission. Have you seen people like that? And then they come at me, they say, how far? You know, we are fellow koinonia people. So what? They now bring it, you copy that dependency mentality is the root of malpractice. Because you are in the exam hall and you never believe. Please, let's be sincere. How many YEC results in Nigeria are genuine? That the people, I'm not condemning. Are you getting my point? How many? I, I never knew they used to do Expo in Jam, but now there's nothing that doesn't happen. All kinds of skills. Expo here, shoes, any kind. You, we have the mindset to be able to innovate ways of cheating. Something is wrong. Hallelujah. Dependency mentality. So, people pair themselves when they are going to write exams. Please come and sit down. If you don't know, I help you. If I don't know, you help me. Question one, you don't know. Two, you don't know. Three, you don't know. The bonus, you don't know. You don't know anything there because a dependency mentality. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. There are many people who are angry with their parents right now. They may have failed in not being able to leave a possession for you. But let me tell you, if you sit down there, it's the same way your children will be angry with you. And say, did you have to marry? That's what your child will ask you one day. See, was it by force? Then you will flog him. Because that's exactly what happened to you when you asked that question. The second mentality on that mindset is the false comfort that comes with generalizing failure. The second mentality on that mindset, we are still talking about one, let's hurry up, is the false comfort, false, F-A-L-S-E, the false comfort that comes with generalizing failure. There are many people who become failures in life because they have found a way of generalizing failure. You know, the moment you generalize failure, have you seen people who fail and you ask them why? They say, ah, didn't you hear that there was mass failure? So they now exit themselves and say, no, it's not unique to me. Oh God, you've been earning 200,000. After five years, you don't have a plot of land. Say, are you, are you, are you, you don't know what is happening in Nigeria. There is a mindset that spreads failure so that you nicely come out of it. Are you getting what I'm saying? But you've not paid the school fees of two of your children. You are a worker. You say, eh, you know now, the way this whole thing is, eh, is this just us? It's not happening in your office. We, we generalize there is a consolation that comes when you tell people, especially Nigerians, that you are not the only one who failed. Is that true? There are many people like that. So a man of God is falling sick recurrently. Instead of him to go back to the world and find out, why am I not eating? He says, look, uh, you see, we are humans. So you spread the failure and it excuses your unique wrong. 
Are you getting what I'm saying? Is, is God speaking to us? So every time you fail, you look for somebody who failed just like you to derive comfort. Rather than settling down to say, no, no, I must have done something wrong. What did I do wrong? What steps can I make to fire back? Praise the Lord. That's the reason why we love witchcraft in Africa. Because it's a general thing. So when they come and say your whole family. Now I'm not of course you know we pray. Next week is miracle service. Right? There's a place to deal with that. But let me tell you. It's not everything in our lives that is tied to demons. Stop generalizing failure. There is, there is what you can know that will exempt you. Hallelujah. Say I refuse to generalize failure. My Bible says when men say there is a casting down, what will be your testimony? Yes. See, for as long as you find pleasure in generalizing failure, you will never be great. There are pastors who will never rise to the challenge for their ministry to experience another level. General failure. They say, you know, there's crisis in the north. Yes, it's true that there's crisis in the north. But are you not seeing God doing exploits in the midst of it? You see, when you generalize failure, it makes you comfortable. Because you are now saying that it's not anything wrong that I did. It's, it's, it's something that affected all of us. Are you getting what I'm saying? I learned early in life to take responsibility for my failures. Why didn't you come? Why did you come late to come and decorate this thing? Am I the only one? Did you meet any other person? We all came late. You see, that's it. That's the point. Praise the Lord. Ah, all of you in your family are not married. Yes, we are all like that. You are now happy. In spite of the unique role you play, your role of carelessness and shouting at every man, that has nothing to do with deliverance your own lack of understanding of submission you just rubbed it in the whole picture and say we are we are we are all we are all there's no marriage coming it's like that this is our family said that's why you find out that after prayers after healing after deliverance some people's situation never changes because the factor they've been trying to hide and generalize it is still there The comfort that comes with generalizing failure. Number three, let me hurry up. The third mindset is an entitlement mentality. Similar to what we call dependency mentality. An entitlement mentality is, is for me, in my opinion, this is the most poisonous of all mentalities because entitlement mentality is the belief that someone owes you something in life someone owes you making your success happen someone owes you making your life are you getting my point that that mentality the government owes me right my father is supposed to give me money i'm getting married my father should build a house for me buy a car it's my right that that entitlement mentality is a dangerous mentality the belief that someone else is responsible for your well-being the belief that somebody else is entirely responsible for your well-being is an entitlement mentality we blame parents for our failures we blame the government for our failures we blame a lot of external factors every time we're mentioning the things that make us fail we never talk about ourselves we never say our contribution to the equation hallelujah um elijah why did you slap shay i slapped her because she has been playing with my intelligence and this other guy who is supposed to talk didn't talk i'm watching you i'm coming for you you see we never say, look, I got this wrong. I'm not in a good relationship right now. I've entered 10 relationships. Nothing has worked. Probably there's something 
there is my outlook about life there is my perspective is ego stinging to come to a point where you accept but that is the point of true liberty are you getting what i'm saying i begged my father for car to go and greet her father with it my father refused if my father only gave me the car wouldn't i be married by now an entitlement mentality i begged my father for jam money he refused to give me no i've not written the jam let me fail but i see if your destiny is in your father's hands please hear me koinonia i'm speaking to you in the name of the lord jesus christ you must quit that that entitlement mentality from today some of us have been sending insultive text messages to our loved ones insulting them and saying, i'm disappointed i asked you for five thousand you cannot even send it mommy this is to let you know i respect you as my mother but i'm, I'm disappointed send you are cursing yourself people return back to their rooms and look at their roommates and they are frowning Una no cook. Ah, you didn't bring ingredients you didn't bring the food you didn't buy kerosene you didn't wash the plates but there is an entitlement mentality something in you lies to you that the whole world is just about you that's the entitlement mentality pastor jakes i beg i feel get something from you he said no what for and you're hungry entitlement that's why you see in many churches there are all kinds of people who wait for people to share testimony oh god gave me three million and somebody's waiting for them immediately after the service say well done sir your testimony really touched me. You see, I hope there are no people who do that kind of thing here. So you are a pest to everybody around you. You are just waiting for people to succeed. And then they pay you like it's a right. Your success depends entirely on you and God. Never forget that. It's God speaking to us. I knew this early in life and it has helped me. That belief that somebody will make you successful is devilish. Grow up tonight and get out of that mindset. Why are you not playing your keyboard very well? And eh, Nobody bought keyboard for me now. Who will buy it? Why have you not risen to that dimension? Why have you not started the business? Where will I get the capital? Everybody I meet is not giving me. Who was assigned to give you? You know, the entitlement mentality is an ugly mentality. It makes you believe everything in the world is all about you. You carry your problems and distribute it. You just come. Have you seen people like that? They come and meet you. The guy talking is wearing trainers of 11,000. He's wearing stock jeans of over 6,000. Dressing well and he's saying, um... I just came to meet you, Kai. Food stuff has finished. As if it's what is a, it's a surprise to you. Shouldn't it finish? Are you not using it? Food stuff has finished. And you say, um, so how can I help you now? Say, I need like 30. 30 will do me. Look at he's He's seeking help from somebody. And he's coming with a childish, right? Entitlement mentality. There are some of us who... And that's the danger. The danger there is when somebody starts helping you, it almost becomes like a right. Have you seen people that came to our homes or our families? They were trained. Parents took care of them at a point that entitlement mentality started. Have you seen people like that? Terrible thing. You see a man and his wife, maybe rain washed their house and they came to stay in your house for one month right very soon they start complaining i've been watching the way madame is putting food for her husband ah what did you expect i noticed the way she puts food for my own husband you are squatting in somebody's house entitlement mentality my uncle gave me a job in this company how can i be in this company my uncle is there and i'm not one of the directors my uncle uncle solomon that grew up in our boys quarters i cooked for him so what so what you come late 
they've put a circular in, in, your, in your reception desk. Resume work by 6.30. You come by 10. You've done that for three years. They didn't, um, they didn't promote you. Your uncle has done everything to lift you. And you are not cooperating. Yet entitlement mentality. How many people have we hated innocently in life? How many of our parents have we called witches and wizards because of entitlement mentality? To an extent, some of us can go somewhere and buy clothes and say they should go and meet your mother to collect the money or your father or your brother. I refuse that mentality. I refuse it. I refuse it. I refuse it. In the name of Jesus Christ. It's God speaking to us. Some of these things I'm saying, when it applies to you and it shoots at you like an arrow, just let it enter you because it will, it will refine you and it will make you as gold. Ladies and gentlemen, let me announce to you again that transition is here. Embrace it. Whether you like it or not. While I sat down, I think it was um, whether January or so, Miracle Service. And they were the celebrants. If your birthday is January, come out. And I saw a lot of people smiling. And I said, transition. Transition. Praise the Lord. Whether you are prepared or not, transition is here. Praise the Lord. My, my sister did something that touched me today. In the afternoon, while I was just meditating, I got an email from my sister. And she sent me, I, I still want to do it. I've been trying to do that on my phone, but it's, I wanted to show all of you. I wanted us to project it here. Our old six massacre 2009 crusade, crusade photo. I really would love us to have that. I think we can walk. I have it in my email. Eh? Get me a laptop with internet and I'll transfer it. Yes. I want you to see it. One day we'll come up. We have the video. I think we have the video of our 2007 crusade. You will see all of us there. You see Victor, the head of the department of protocol. They all held firewood on their head. Hey, oh. That's what the song they were singing and jumping. Hey, oh. And you see us so lean, looking like, like whatever. Transitions. But here we are today. Ten years after now. We will look back. You will see the pictures of today. And you will smile. You will tell your daughter, that was me. Say, are you hearing? That was me. I was serving the Lord all my life. So don't think, is this lie that most of our parents lied to us. They said they were SU president. They were the best footballer in their school. They were the best everything. Our own has proof. You can see it. And you can know. Praise the Lord. One last mentality mediocre mentality mediocre mentality mediocre mentality we are still talking about the reasons why people become failures and mediocres and I'm, I've just touched on number one medio mentalities, mindsets really mediocre mentality what is a mediocre mentality is the mindset that tells you impact, influence is carnal it's a mindset that is satisfied with being small, being quiet. The mindset of an average life. The belief, the fallacy that an average life is the greatest way to make heaven. is a mediocre mentality. That mindset of being small. Have you had people like that? Me, all I want, God, just give me one small golf, one, two house, anywhere, whether in the bush or wherever, I'm grateful. Let me just have my two children, if we can eat food in the morning, even if it's once a day, God be praised. It's a mediocre mentality. No matter how spiritual you try to make it. There are churches like that. We're happy. We're a simple, nice family church. We're happy. This guy has been there for the past 10 years. We're there. We're not doing anything. We're not letting anybody know what God. We're happy. We're okay like that. There's an army rising up. There's an army rising up. There's
there's an army rising up and they will break every chain break every chain break every chain break every chain kingdom advancement Kingdom advancement is tied to one word, influence. One word, influence. Without influence, there is no kingdom advancement. I want you to know that. When the church is quiet in a society, there is no influence and there is no advancement. The church in Nigeria is not quiet at all. That's why we are involved in everything in this country. The church, Nigeria is the most religious country in the whole world. And forget about the errors here and there. I tell you, the church in Nigeria is alive. We have a say in everything from the executive government. Everybody knows in Nigeria that you don't downplay the church and go scot free. Influence. I've studied revivals, I've studied um, technological revivals it was all tied to the church are you getting what i'm saying we need men and women of influence get my teaching conquering cosmos there i teach on what we call strategic apostolic invasion it's not just sharing tracks influence what is wrong if koinonia has 10 bank managers as, as your members you imagine that we call that influence where one person represents a nation influence influence are you getting what i'm saying please don't ever reject influence in your life because god wants to give it to you it was through influence jesus was able to advance the kingdom the bible says it was noised abroad that that celebrity was in town and he had the opportunity to teach and to heal and to deliver it says in in matthew chapter 5 it says you are the salt of the earth you add value you give meaning to the earth. You are not just a tongue talker. He calls you the salt of the earth. He calls you the light of the world. And he says you are a city. Not like a city. Not a village. You are a city. Hallelujah. I refuse to be small in my life. Nobody will preach me into being small. I rejected it long ago. I still reject it. Koinonia will not be small. Souls are saved because of the influence. Destinies are changed because of the influence. During the retreat, media people told us the targets that they want on Facebook and the rest. And I told them, go for it. We are going all the way for it. Let me tell you, this is not a small ministry. We are visionary people and we refuse to be small. And you will never be part of this vision and be small. I will challenge you. I will challenge you. Thank God for where you are. But we will not allow you to remain there. You must rise. Because there is coming a renaissance. There will be an emergence of people in every area. Hallelujah. It was a mirage in nigeria if one person owned a television station is that true television station i remember that time you own a television station they tell you every kind of thing and god said come on where are those apostles and men and women started rising 2005 the lord revealed to me that there will be 37 christian stations in nigeria and today how many lives have been blessed through the power of the media are you getting what I'm saying? All the technological gurus and the rest. Imagine you making a, a laptop that the, it must not mention Jesus. But imagine that you put it on and, and the sound for it to start is a deep worship song. Whether you like it or not, you must buy it. Hallelujah. Praise God. You must make your presence known. Is the, is, the, is, is the principle of dominion. Part of dominion is to make your presence known in a territory. Then they will adopt your ideologies. Then they will embrace your convictions. If there are, if there are hundred millionaires, I'm not talking of one million. 
real millionaires in this place i guarantee you your spheres of influence will help. i something happened i think um i went one of our ladies here she's she's technically my account officer with one of the banks and um and uh we're going she had been forcing me to come and collect my card my card had expired and she was forcing me to come and collect the card she said i should get back into banking with them and all of that and then eventually i went she had prepared everything when i got there she was greeting me her superior was just looking at me who is this guy and before i know it i saw one koinonia member coming again and then one other lady coming to greet i said that's right this is the kind of testimony we want to be seen when they came and they were greeting ah the man squared up and said oh, well done sir i told him i said this this lady is the one who is forcing me to come to this bank look at her see that what does that mean promote her and lift her because she's doing a good job the influence of the kingdom i don't know who taught you that mediocrity brings glory to god i want you to know that the more you have results the more your words become powerful Results add weight to your words. Malakata balakato pashikata yana ba. Shenkata balako pratisi de balada rosi. Refuse a mediocre mentality. Refuse it. Hallelujah. Refuse it. Pastor Jakes in his place of work within a short time. When he was announcing his, his promotion and his lifting, I smiled. I said, those guys, those guys, come on now. Physical competence, the anointing, wisdom, grace, everything combined. You can't be small. Shout it, I refuse to be small. Say it, I refuse to be small. Please, I'm challenging you. Thank God for the photocopying business, but don't die there. Start small, but I'd like you to see beyond. Who is God speaking to I'd like you to see beyond. Refuse to be small. The influence of the kingdom is the key to strategic apostolic invasion. Michael Jackson is long dead. But last year alone, his album made 150 million US dollars. In fact, when he died, three days after his death, they made 120 million dollars at his death. The man who feeds you is the one you will listen to. Is that not true? For as long as the world system keeps feeding us, we will be forced to listen to them. But I tell you, there is an army. Ha! There's an army rising up. This is why we are teaching these teachings. There's an army rising up. There's an army rising up. They will break every chain, break every chain, break every chain, break every chain, break every chain. Sing one more time. There's an army, there's an army rising. Things will not continue to be this way, I tell you. There's an army rising up to break every chain. To break every chain. It is not the will of God for you to be small. It does not glorify God in any way when you are small. John 15, I think from verse 8 when you read down, it says, Herein is our Father glorified when ye bear much fruit. Much fruit, not little fruit. Much fruit. Much fruit. Look, I'm not talking of some carnal, fleshly wanting to make it in life. I'm talking of lifting with an assignment. Influence that is intentional as a means to an end. It makes your words powerful. You are able to speak. 
Hallelujah. That's why we must speak into your life. Oh, you will get the oil company job. That devil will not stop you. The, the, no, there are the principles. You will get it. You will be wealthy. You will be blessed. The devil will be alive to see it. I will never raise a poor congregation. Never raise a weak congregation. A weak congregation produces a weak man of God. A weak ministry that has no voice. I will never let anybody watch me on TV and scroll and say next. This useless man, part of the noisemakers. No. That when you listen, you say this is it. I had one word and it changed me. Makala boko superiata. You must embrace the influence of the kingdom. I don't know what you have been taught, but you must change your mind. We have small parents, innocent but small, small families, small everything, small. I got my small degree, I read my thing, I don't even want anything. Let me just get, I got one teaching, one LEA school, I'm okay. 7,000 is enough, what am I looking for in this life? Stop that, stop that kind of devilish thinking remember let me always balance this i'm not talking of this carnal lustful affinity for the things of the world i'm talking of gaining kingdom influence with the exact intention right the exact intention to bring the glory and the kingdom of god there was a time jesus came in the city and he stole the show from all the scribes and pharisees the guys were angry they say they are not listening to us again. Ah, what happened? Look, let me tell you, Koinonia, we are a city. We are a city. You are not a village. You are not small. I separate you from that small mindset. You may be in a small room now. Think big. You may be in a small hut now. No problem. Soak the gari, but see the world. There is much to do for the kingdom. God has increased and expanded our influence through the teachings and through the meetings that we've got. And we have seen more souls. Look at the gentleman. Where is that guy that came that shared his testimony? Oh, he's outside. Oh, look at that's the gentleman. All the way. We call it kingdom influence. How many people claim they saw Jesus and he said the words he gave them, he said they should take it out of the earth. But they are poor and broke. It has not come out. Not even everybody in the city knows. And it's not that they had a wrong encounter. Hallelujah. Influence. Influence. You must embrace it in the name of Jesus. Say, I refuse to be small. Say it, I refuse to be small. Challenge yourself, I refuse to be small. The second reason why young people become failures. My spirit is fired up. We are going to pray. The second reason, I told you the first is the mindset. Second reason is laziness. Laziness. You're my treasure, my priority. Who can compare to you? Great is the match of your royalty. Oh, morning star, you true. So laziness, everybody say laziness. The second reason why people become failures in life is laziness. There is this spirit of laziness that is upon many Nigerians, upon many young people, an inertia, a reluctance to move forward, inactivity, satisfied with their levels, closely tied to laziness, is the spirit of procrastination. I will do it another day. Oh, I will do it. 
Is it not savings? I will save the money. Is it? I will do it. I will do it. Procrastination is a dangerous spirit. Pray for your destiny. I will pray. Settle down. Begin to study in the unique area God has called you. Man of God, study about church growth. I will study one day until all your members leave. And then you start getting angry at everybody. All these people, are you sure they didn't touch their hand? Go and touch it too, if it's available like that. Hallelujah. Laziness. There are many lazy people in Nigeria. And the Bible talks a lot about laziness. The Bible talks about laziness. The moment you are lazy, get set to beg. You have signed an agreement with begging, no matter who you are. And I have found something with lazy people hate begging. They hate begging. They feel embarrassed. Don't worry, just bring it, bring it, bring it. I'll do it fast. Lazy people hate begging. Hallelujah. Sorry for the little distraction. Let's pray. Pray in tongues while I do this. Is that all right? All right, so go ahead and pray. Pray in tongues very quickly so that it will sink. It will sink down. Your word is producing results in my life. Hallelujah. Laziness. There are many of us who are lazy. Look at me. When it is time to sit down, you sit down. But if it is time to get up and act, huh? when there is an anointing for something, you stand up and act. There are many people that if you took action when God spoke to you, you would have built the house by now. There are many people, if you took action, you would have gotten that job. Action, laziness. I would do it. No. Unfortunately, time does not wait for everybody. And if you want to wait until everything is right, you will never move in your life. The Bible says, he that considers the weather will never sow and as a result will never reap. Hallelujah. Laziness, inaction, procrastination, that inertia, refusal to move forward. You are sitting in your room. Somebody just sows a thousand naira and the Lord says, get up and go to Jordan bookstore. I gave you that money because there is a book I want you to buy. He said, eh, no problem. You sit with that money immediately. You sit before you know it. You have spent 200 naira from it. See that? Before you know it, you finish the money. You just sit down there. Let me tell you one way the devil kills people. Sleep. I know God gives sleep, but Satan can also give sleep. Sleep. This sleep. It looks little. I was teaching the school of ministry students and I told them, if you sleep eight hours a day when you are 30 years, you've slept for how long? You've slept for 10 years of your life. Exactly. By the time you are 30 years, just know that you are in reality 20 years because the whole 10 years went into sleeping. 
you sleep from 8 o'clock you wake up round 1 waking is around 4 you just wake up and check if there's any Nigerian film around when there is none you lie down you wake up around 9 that's the second phase of, of the waking up it's not like you sleep marathon you wake up just browse around and then maybe you plug water for bathing and get back to sleep before you know it is one o'clock you just yawn and stand up and you sit down you are lazy as a sleep. you will be poor guaranteed please brothers and sisters hear me love not sleep too much it will rob you of the anointing i i don't know any man who carries true anointing who loves sleep no no sir no sir i've been awake today since at about i think maybe 2 30 or 3. god is my witness i've been awake and as i go back now it's not like i'm going to go and jump on my bed and start sleeping no what is your concept of success Look, success is not cheap. It's not for children. T.D. Jakes wrote a book, Can You Stand to Be Blessed? It takes stamina to be distinguished. So for those of us who think the anointing comes and you just lie down and sleep and snore away your life and wake up and find yourself successful, you are joking. Wake up. Sleep. Huh? You lie down and sleep. It brings a lot of things. Forgetfulness. You are 30 years, you forget about everything. Somebody says, I'm coming. He comes and he says, why are you here? He says, I said, I'm coming. He says, oh, I remember. He says, but you are too young for that. Unnecessary sleep. When the night time, when you should wake up and study and pray. Some of us, people can be gisting. They can even lie down on your bed and wake up. You didn't know that anybody lay down there. Because you sleep and, and the sleep is so deep. You wake up and you are frowning. Ah, why did you wake me? It's a bad attitude. I know you won't like me. I will still say it. I love you too much to leave you that way. Especially for the gentlemen. Please love not sleep. If you find yourself sleeping around, just, just imagine money disappearing from your life. One, two, anointing disappearing from your life. Wake up. Don't you know there is the mystery of the night time? Look at the prophets in the Bible. Look at men. Look, Job said, um, I mean, the psalmist said in the night time, during his time of meditation, when things are revealed to him, the night time is when great men get insights. It's the time where men of power travel in the spirit. Okay, it's, it's, it's true that you are tired. At least three, four or so. Wake up. Don't let your body cheat you. You need to drag it and say, no way. I refuse to let my flesh make me a failure in life. Who is God speaking to? There are certain people, even five o'clock waking up in the morning, that families used to do, you know that thing they do, five o'clock. You wake up, you carry your Bible, drop on your bed and sleep on it. Somebody will come and see you and think you are on, on, on that deep med. Who are you cheating? Who are you lying to? When you see somebody please don't play that kind of expensive game with your destiny i'm not telling you not to sleep there are times i take out time to rest but brothers and sisters if you must be great there is a price please hear me koinonia there is a price hallelujah so laziness we must walk on it laziness kill procrastination from your life there are some things god has told you people to do god told you to sow a seed i will do it tomorrow god told you to get up and read on leadership i will do it tomorrow do it now do it immediately number three fear the reason why many people become failures and become mediocre in life fear 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 of failure. Fear of being embarrassed. Not just failure, but fear of repeated failure. It's true that failure is embarrassing. It's true that failure is lashing, is ego stinging. 
but it is in your failure that you find the door to true victory please hear what i'm saying and take it seriously fear of being seen as a failure is that not what is responsible for our fake lives right you go and borrow a shoe of twenty thousand naira and you wear and say this shoe twenty thousand naira is it your own no because you don't want to fail People borrow phones. I beg, I just want to stroll to Ribadu. Can you help me with your phone? What for? You borrow watch, borrow clothes, borrow phone, borrow everything, borrow mindsets, borrow everything. And in the end of it, you find out that there is no authentic life. I've told us again and again in Koinonia, stop trying to look successful. Pay the price and be successful. Pay the price. That's why we don't discriminate anybody here. I don't want to know who you are or who your father is in terms of maybe preference and all of that. I treat everybody with honor and dignity because I believe everybody can be everything if you get the word. Hallelujah. Fear of failure. Look at me. Why didn't you start the business? Failure made you to give a lot of excuses. Why didn't you go and apply for the job? have not served. Do they take people who have not served? Did you go? Did you go? You see, ba, look at me. Many of us write a lot of prayer requests. Next week now, there will be another one. I, I, you know, I kneel down to pray and I see it. Some of you is full scab. You write it and then you write, uh, please turn over. That means it does not finish. Oh, there's still some more. But the issue is that, do you really believe that as the anointing comes on it, you will need to take action? You see why I've been teaching us on faith. Faith in one word is obedience. Action. I refuse fear. Is it because people will talk about you? Fail and see whether people won't talk about you. What you are running away from will come. Whether through the door of success or failure, it will still come. The greatest way to reply critics is massive success. Continue your results. Let the result keep speaking. You wrote jam. You didn't pass. So what? Why don't you write again? Are you hearing what I'm saying, please? Fear. Nigerians can fear. And many of us, that fear makes us to give ourselves excuses. I'm young. Please, there's time for everything. When is the time? I'm young. He told Jeremiah, do not say I am a child. Don't say I'm a child say I'm a child Warren Buffett Warren Buffett the, the CEO of Berkshire Hathaway one of the top three wealthiest people in the world he was asked a question that um, was the greatest mistake he made in his life and he said he started investing at a um, very late what is the late? 8 years old Eight years old, Sila. Think about what I just said. There are people to start training and building their children, they say it's too small. Do you know there are some of you? If you talk to your parents about finances as you are now, they'll say, What are you what are you talking about it for? It's, it's an innocent mindset, but it's poisonous. So they tell you, Don't worry. Ah, why, why are you rushing? And then before you know it. You now have to face life by yourself and you make a lot of blunders. Say, I refuse fear. Say it, I refuse fear. There are two kinds of fear. Fear of trying and fear that comes as a result of the memory of your past failure. Some people have refused to get into relationships. The last one didn't work. Who said all will not work? You have made adjustments. I remember I went to minister somewhere and I gave a woman a word. I told her, I said, Madam, um, I see that something happened in your home, but I'm seeing you marrying again. No, ah! no please. Oh, my children, it's okay. I said, ah, Madam, what's the issue? I'm just telling you what God is telling me. That a man is going to come, ask your hand in marriage, and you'll be gloriously said, say, me, marry a man. Me, men. Look at my children. Me, men. The woman was saying, I said, Madam, I'm a man. No, please, this one that you are talking about men as if it's not every man that everybody blah 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 blah. woman started crying i said madam god is bringing a good 
Okay, you know how women talk. Okay, well, let's see. Fear. Fear. That's what has stopped some of us from being champion. You are used to failing. The day you succeeded and they told you you succeeded, they say it's a lie. Don't play games with me. Don't you know that the divine life, part of the blessings of the divine life is a life of success. No matter how you are failed in life, hear me, I want you to believe that you can come back alive. Are you hearing me? Say, I refuse to fear. Say it, I refuse to fear. See, there is a, there is an, let me, let me use this slang, there is an, I don't send mentality, you have to give life and give people if you want to make it. Some of us are too careful. What will, what will Zuerar say now? What will mom, we are too careful that 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 excessive care is not is not care unto faith it's care unto doubt and it will kill you there are people today who have refused to learn how to drive because of fear what if i capsize in a gutter you have refused to learn there are others who have refused to learn how to do a lot of things god gave you opportunity to learn so many things there's tailoring now, professional tailoring. Somebody from UK just came and said, I want to train you. I said, Kai, me, please. I don't want any insult. I've seen the way they insulted my madam. I, I, I don't want headache. You are ready to fail. If you think like that, you are going to fail. In the name of Jesus, I release upon you the spirit of courage. Courage. You have to face life with courage. Brothers and sisters, wake up. Stop giving excuses and tell yourself, I refuse to fear. I refuse to fear. It is a risk to do everything in life. The only guarantee you have is the word of God. Get up and in the name of Jesus, take steps. Refuse to fear. Koinone, I'm preaching to you. Refuse to fear. Refuse to fear. Refuse, to fear. refuse it. I know you carried over the course. Go back again with courage. Fear has kept a lot of people down. The Bible says, and to deliver them who through fear of death have all their lifetime be subject to bondage. To pray for a sick person, fear. You're already stretching your hands. You are looking and say, ah, I'm only in welfare department. So let me not disgrace myself here. Fear. Lastly, one of the biggest reasons why many people become failures. Ignorance of kingdom principles that guarantee a life of success and impact. Ignorance of kingdom principles. Ignorance. This is, in my opinion, the biggest reason. Ignorance of kingdom principles that guarantee a life of success and impact Joshua chapter 1 verse 8 it says this book of the law shall not depart from out of thy mouth but thou shalt meditate therein day and night that thou mayest observe to do all that is written you cannot observe what you do not know he said then not before not during then shall thou make thy ways prosperous and you shall have not any kind of success good success ignorance look at me i know we know that by now in koinonia that there are laws in the kingdom prosperity is not magic it's not a wish there are kingdom principles a life of influence you want to be a career of the glory and the power of god it's not a wish there are pathways to it you want to carry honor upon your life you can be blessed it doesn't mean you are honorable it says and Jabez was more honorable honor is a law in the spirit there is what brings honor you can be rich and not have honor you can be anointed and not have honor when honor comes on your life, everybody knows that there is honor upon your life. Hallelujah. Longevity has a principle. Longevity. Influence has a principle. And he said in Matthew chapter 13 now, I think verse 11 or so, 
If I'm not mistaken, he said, it has been given unto you. Say, it has been given unto me. One more time, it has been given unto me to know the mysteries of the kingdom. Everybody say the mysteries of the kingdom. It is on the strength of those mysteries that you will enjoy dominion. It is on the strength of those mysteries that you will do great and mighty things in life. Nobody will just come and bless you for nothing. When during our series, The Mysteries of the Kingdom, I teach on the law of exchange. And I told you nothing goes for nothing. Nothing goes for nothing. There is an exchange that must happen. Hallelujah. Very important. These are some of the reasons why people become failures in life. And part of this is working in our lives, one or two or more, or for some of us, even all of them. We are going to challenge, challenge the gates of failure and say, in this season of the rain, I'm breaking out. No way. I won't remain like that. I won't park where my father parked and become a failure. He leads me and guides me to the city of above. He leads me and guides me to my place of destiny. He leads me and guides me to the city of above. He leads me and guides me to my place of destiny. He leads me and guides me to the city of above. He leads me Rise up on your feet and let's begin to pray. Bless the Lord for this word tonight. These are preparatory teachings for the series that is coming. I need to prepare us. I don't want to just waste the revelations that God has given me. Go ahead and prophesy. Lord, you are leading me. Day by day, I keep rising. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We are praying, pick up your notebook. You are going to read all those first prayer points, the five areas that you must focus on your spiritual life, financial life, family life, career life, relationship. Lift your voice and begin to prophesy on them one by one and say, Lord, I must excel in every one of these areas. Go ahead and pray. I excel in my spiritual life. I'm moving from one level of the anointing to another. One level of grace to the other. My relationship with Jesus is becoming stronger and stronger. I'm on fire for God. I'm on fire. No lukewarmness in my life. No lukewarmness in my life. No religion in my life. Come on, pray. I'm on fire for God. Burning, burning for the kingdom. Pray for your finances. I refuse to be poor. I refuse to be broke. I refuse to be a beggar. I make up my mind that I am a blessing. I am a blessing, not a liability. I am a blessing. I reject poverty. I cause that spirit in my life. Pray. 
my home is a place of love, a place of blessings. In the name of Jesus Christ, I'm an exceptional father, an exceptional husband, an exceptional leader. Pray, an exceptional priest. Just do what I ask you to do. Just sit while you are praying the Spirit. You are receiving something. It's your year of extraordinary fruitfulness. I empower you by the anointing of the Holy Ghost. I empower you. I empower you. Shamarakatos kalabarikata. Negate preskata likatos dasiana hasabrakatosia. It will be like a dream. You are being lifted by the hand of the Almighty. There is a force that is lifting you beyond the limitations of men. There is a force that is lifting your family. You came for koinonia. I speak it in the name of Jesus and by the power of the Holy Ghost. The Lord is still telling me He's bringing speed. I'm doing a quick walk, a quick walk, a quick walk. That's what the Holy Ghost is telling me. A quick walk. This is the season of the quick walk. I am doing a quick walk. By the power of the Holy Ghost, I release that grace upon this house. The grace that makes things happen fast. The mouth of the Lord has spoken it and we receive it. We declare a quick walk by the power of the Holy Ghost. Zakata lakata brandes kebarakato zedeketa. Hallelujah. The Bible says, But without faith, it is impossible to please God. It says, for he that cometh to God must believe first that he exists. You are not coming to meet an idol. Number two, that he is the rewarder of them that diligently seek him. Listen, koinonia is not just a teaching ministry. It's not just where you come to learn. There is a spiritual impartation. You are immersed in a reality. And you step out of it with an evidence that no power, no force, no devil can contest or deny. It's reality. These are not shadows. You will watch in wonder as you begin to see the testimonies that unfold. Just from the experiences. You see, God visits you through his word. He visits you through his power. Leave the realm of argument. Where you come and you are wondering, can God touch me? Can God bless me? No. It's a deposit of his grace. This place is a portal. It's an access point to the throne. God made it so by his grace. And that if you are humble enough to believe and receive, just one encounter is enough. You don't need to come twice. One and it's impossible to leave this place tonight and not return with a testimony. No, no. 
Listen, if this is your first time coming here, I'm telling you, it's impossible. You will never have to come twice to have a test. It doesn't matter. You are under a system that is bound by a covenant. This is not just something about a man's intention. Hallelujah. Lord Jesus, we thank you for what you have done tonight. We declare that forever Jesus will be lifted in this place. Lord, more than a man, may your people see Jesus. May they see Christ lifted and glorified. Tonight, change our lives by the power of your word. In the name of Jesus. Please just sit down, everyone. I'm giving you joy for morning. Joy for morning. Joy for morning. That's what the Spirit of God is saying. This is not for everybody. There are specific people that this prophetic word is joy. 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 I'm giving you joy for morning. Joy for morning. Joy for morning. Joy for morning. Mighty God, we thank you. In the name of Jesus Christ. Amen and amen. Just help those under the anointing. And um, let us get to the word. These are the various ways and systems in the kingdom by which God leads men. More than the communications of men. This is a spirit communication. That God invades your spirit man and deposits something upon you. You see, God, just within these few minutes, has distributed so many things. So many things. Activating gifts, dimensions, bringing people into realms and levels most times you may not understand what you have received until you step out of this place and then you will see possibilities activated and you will know that this one was by the finger of god hallelujah second peter chapter one let's get to the word blessed be the name of the lord Blessed be the name of the Lord. The Lord is bringing restoration to someone among the ushers. I just saw this now in a flash. One of the ushers, the Lord is bringing restoration. Restoration by the Spirit. And God is saying it will no longer be like before. It will no longer be like before. It will no longer be like before. In the name of Jesus Christ. The name of Jesus Christ. Second Peter chapter 1. I don't know who this is for, 
But the Lord is saying, I should tell you, my word still stands. My word still stands. What I told you must come to pass the way I said it. The Lord is saying, I should tell somebody, my word still stands. No matter what you have seen, this is a prophetic word for someone. And I speak by the Spirit. God is saying, I should tell you, my word still stands. My word, Jakoto Sekatarakatusia. My word still stands. No matter what you have seen, my word still stands. I've spoken once, I will not speak again. My word still stands. My word still stands. Forever, O Lord, your word is settled. Forever, O Lord, your word is settled. Please sit down. I want you to be very sensitive to what God is doing. This is not just people shouting carelessly or falling under the anointing. No. This is God birthing definite things in the lives of people. Birthing very definite things. Things you can see. Things you can relate with. You will know and you can know that this one was by the hand of God. Second Peter chapter 1. We start from verse 2. We are reading the first three verses after from verse 2. Just help those under the anointing. Grace and peace be multiplied unto you through the knowledge of God and of our Lord Jesus Christ. The next verse says, According as his divine power hath given us all things. Ah, fire is burning in this house. I tell you, fire is burning in this house. 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 All that I'm seeing in the spirit is fire. Just fire. Fire. Don't mind my madness. Just allow me to do this thing. I'm just seeing fire. That's what I'm seeing. Fire. You know, when this thing starts, no matter how you try to concentrate, sometimes you just continue to see. Um, there's a young man here. You are in ministry. The Lord is telling me that you are entering the realm of the miraculous right now. The dimension of strange miracles god has been dealing with you for months you have been having encounters it's even part of the reasons why you came here and god is saying you are stepping into a strange dimension of miracles wherever they are in the name of jesus i stretch my hands let the grace and the unction that brings men into dimensions of the miraculous you will know you have come to receive something solid you will go back to your ministry and in the name of Jesus you will see the hand of God in unusual ways. Let the sick be healed under your hand. Let lives, let testimonies, let testimonies, testimonies, testimonies. It's like a well of fire from within your spirit. Opening up a well of fire from within your spirit. I shift you. To a level of miracles, a level of signs and wonders. <clears throat> Hallelujah. You know, sometimes God just interrupts the service to minister to his people, and it's important to be sensitive because sometimes. This five ten minutes of ministration. I know that next week is a miracle service, but sometimes you always will not have to wait for the miracle service. There are people whose situations are a matter of life and death. So it's, it's God bringing people into that realm. 
It's, it's by the power of the Holy Spirit, entirely by the anointing of the Holy Spirit. So he introduces levels, realities into your life. These are the dimensions that no man can gain sin nor resist. Please sit down. Let's see if we can make progress. We have a lot to do. Our retreat starts tomorrow and Sunday. Maybe this will be the last one. And then we'll trust God for grace. This lady, Kende, the Lord is bringing, I'm seeing a fire that is coming upon her. And the Lord is saying he's burning everything that has been deposited into her body. This is sickness. Sickness. But in the name of Jesus, I command that spirit to give way. Right now, anyone speak here. If there is anything, sickness. I sense a healing anointing right now. Sickness. Be healed. Be healed now. Be healed. Please help them. Be healed. Anything that has entered your body, every deposit to manifest as sickness. Kabarakatash. Be healed. I bring you the life and the power of Jesus. Be healed. It goes once and for all. Uncontrolled flow of blood goes now. Uncontrolled flow of blood, it goes now. Once and for all, it leaves your life forever. In the name of Jesus Christ, the Lord is healing a breath lump. I decree and declare that lump dies now. That lump dies now. That lump dies now. That lump dies now. The Lord is breaking a cycle of joblessness in a family. All of you in that family, there's not one person that has a job. But I'm seeing like a sword coming right now. And in the name of Jesus, I don't know where that family is. But by the power of the Holy Spirit, your season for testimony, your season for testimony, I break that cycle right now. In the name of Jesus, for he has broken the gates of brass and cut the bars of iron in thunder. I release that family. Enter your realm of testimony. In the name of Jesus Christ. Please sit down. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Mighty God. Let's continue. Second Peter chapter 1 verse 3 now. According as his divine power hath given unto us all things that pertain unto life and godliness through the knowledge of him that has called us to glory and virtue. Verse 4. It says, Whereby are given unto us exceeding great and precious promises. What did he give us? Exceeding great and precious promises. So how did he make us partake us through the promises? He left promises that when we access and walk in that reality, we will be partakers of that divine nature, having escaped the corruption that is in this world through loss. Bless your word tonight. And in the name of Jesus, we pray that you will increase us. Amen and amen. Last week, I started teaching on the warfare dimension of kingdom wealth i'll be teaching along that lines not exactly the same thing but then i want us to listen very carefully because for many people the subject of the blessings of god divine supplies wealth and prosperity has always been seen as the activity of carnal people those who do not love god and those who don't want to grow spiritually but that is not true I took out time to explain to you that the fight for resources 
is the fight for the souls of men. Remember my teaching? Yes. And that there will always be a demand by Satan to give your soul in exchange for material things. So, it's not just that your soul, listen carefully, it's not just that your soul is given to the devil, but that your spiritual growth and your spiritual health is mortgaged for the purpose of material supplies. And I gave you a litmus test that you can know you have fraternized with this system when your wealth grows as your spirit dies. Satan will never allow both your soul and your pocket to rise together. When your pocket begins to rise, he will come and negotiate that your spirit goes down. Are we together? And that has been the system. So people give up the activities that make for the health of their soul to look for money. But in the name of Jesus, there is a generation of men and women rising by the Spirit of God who will prosper even as their souls prosper. And so I told you there is a warfare dimension that the king of Tyre, Satan himself, sits upon that mountain that represents the economy of the earth. And we're going to look at the second aspect today. And I'm just going to talk to you two words, basically, that we'll be teaching um, along those lines. And then God will grant us grace. Genesis chapter 1, please. Genesis chapter 1. When God made man, he gave a command. And the first word that man heard from God, according to verse 28. And God blessed them and said unto them, Be fruitful. Everybody say it after me. Be fruitful. Number two, multiply. Number three, replenish the earth. Number four, subdue it. That these four dimensions is what makes for dominion. That for the saints to at any point command dominion, all of these dimensions must be captured in their experiences. You must have the ability to be fruitful. You must have the ability to multiply. You must have the ability to replenish and then to subdue. I'm not talking about all of those dimensions. I just want to connect something. I did a teaching before we went on a short break on be fruitful. Please, you need to get it. It's very, very important because I want to start building from there. God is a God of increase. God is a God that desires the saints to increase and to be fruitful. And um, when the Lord mandated man to be fruitful, please leave the scripture there. Many theologians have taught that what God meant by be fruitful is just biological fruitfulness, like have children and replenish the earth. I, I believe there is a dimension of that. But as I began to study this, the Lord opened my eyes to certain dimensions. And that's where I want to start with tonight. That there are at least five levels or five areas where God desires the saints to be fruitful. Write it down, please. Number one, the womb, or what you call fruitfulness, children. The womb. When God told man be fruitful, he meant to be able to carry seed up until delivery, and by so doing, multiply the earth. Number two, the mind. Be fruitful means that your mind must also be fruitful. Number three, your hands. Be fruitful. Your hands must also be fruitful. Number four, be fruitful. Your mouth, your lips must also be fruitful. Just follow me carefully. And then lastly, your spirit. So when God spoke to man and said be fruitful, 
he was not just speaking to the womb of the woman. He was speaking to all of these dimensions of man. That the womb be fruitful. The mind be fruitful. The hands be fruitful. The mouth be fruitful. The spirit be fruitful. Are we together? The fruit of the womb is the child. The fruit of the mind is ideas and creativity. Please write. When the womb gives birth, you call the child or you call the fruit a child. When the mind or your thoughts give birth, you call the fruit ideas. When the hands give birth, you call the child work or accomplishments. When the mouth gives birth, you call it words. When the spirit gives birth, you call it character. And so all these dimensions must be captured in the experience of the believer. If you are to walk in fruitfulness and if you are to challenge the powers that be. We have dealt with the fact that there are spirits that sit upon this mountain. And we agree that one of the ways that we challenge these spirits is by our allegiance to the system of the kingdom. Are we together? We rounded up in the last meeting with the Daniel where Daniel and the three Hebrew boys came and said, O oh, king, we will not bow. We know that the way of safety and security is to bow to this idol, but we have made up our minds that our God is able to deliver us. Are we together? And so it is possible that we conquer these spirit influences by refusing to bow to these operations, but it does not automatically translate into the blessings of the saints. And I want to just guide you very briefly. Tonight, I'm talking very briefly on the power of productivity. The power of productivity. This is a very scarce teaching in the body of Christ and even in Africa, the power of productivity. Submitting to the government of Christ in the face of these controlling powers is not enough to deliver the inheritance of Christ to the saints. There is a weapon of mass destruction given to the saints wherewith we can paralyze the systems of darkness and possess what our possession is. The name of that weapon is productivity. Say productivity. Please write this down. There is a difference between value and productivity. There is a very huge difference between being valuable or value and productivity. Value talks of your inherent abilities. Value talks of your potentials. Value talks of your transactable skills. That means that everything you piece together that can become an advantage in your life is called value. But productivity is more than value. Are we together now? Just because you are valuable does not guarantee that you will be rewarded. The world is full of many valuable people. But in the face of economic hardship, even their value is not able to deliver to them the kind and the extent of supplies that they need. Are we together now? It is important to be aware of value. But just camping at that realm of value is not enough to empower the saints. 
please write this down. Productivity is the quality or the ability to create, make, or enhance products and services that are needed and useful. I'll take it again. Productivity is the quality or ability to create, make, or enhance products and services that are needed and useful. Never forget this, this definition. That productivity is the quality to be able to create and make products and services that are needed and useful. Look up please everyone. While value talks of your inherent abilities, productivity refers to a system where you turn those abilities into products and services that are needed and useful. It is not valuable people who are rewarded. It is productive people. Are we together? Please, you may write this down. Financial resources will always follow productivity, not necessarily value. Financial resources will always move the direction of productivity. Productivity also refers to the ability to make anything in abundance. The ability to provide the abundant supply of anything is productivity. So God has a system for our prosperity. He's a God of increase. In spite of the fact that there are giants on these mountains, Satan himself, sitting at the helm of the economic affairs to manipulate the saints into lack, into poverty, and by so doing, distract them so that they do not have the time to prosper and serve the purposes of the kingdom. And I'm teaching you that one of the weapons to bring victory, economic victory, is productivity. Any man, any woman, any church, any organization that is not productive will be poor. It's a law. Please listen carefully. Any man, any woman, any church, any business, any organization that fails to be productive there is no system to authorize reward for a non-productive personality before i discuss a few things and a few ways that god can help us to be productive let me destroy what i call the consumer mentality Please listen to me, Africa. One of the greatest unbecoming of this continent is what we call a consumer mentality. Say consumer mentality. It is sin for God to give you a thing and then it shrinks and dies. And you cannot transfer the abundance of that to a generation. It is sin. Everything God gives men he expects that they increase. In the parable of the talents, Matthew chapter 25, the Bible talks about three men who were given talents. One, five talents, listen carefully. The other two talents and then the last, a talent. And the Bible says the one with the five went and made five more, increased. The other one with two went and made two more. But the one with one talent returned back and said, you are a hard man. You reap where you did so. And Jesus called him a name. He didn't call him lazy man. He said, you are a wicked and unprofitable. That's the word. Unprofitable. There is no gain trusting you. Wicked and unprofitable servant. 
Africa has been plagued and sadly, respectfully so, but sadly, our educational system has also contributed in building the consumer mentality. Are we together now? So, the, the whole idea of productivity is foreign to an average African and worst of it all to an average believer. The subject of productivity is not taught believers. We, we have been trained to ignore productivity. Let me tell you, I think the worst calm is to expect life to give to you something. The Bible says give and it will be given to you. That's the law. It didn't say what you give is what must be given. But until you give, nothing should be given back to you. So if you do not give and you expect that something should be given back to you. It's amazing, my brothers and my sisters, how many of us, many of us even seated here, just believe that life will have a way and find a way of coming to bring resources to you to meet your needs. Just because God is alive does not mean your needs are met guaranteed. Are you getting what I'm saying now? Productivity. So the average person thinks consumption. Give me. Let me eat. It has finished. Give me another one. Let me eat. It has finished. Daddy, give me this. It has finished. Productivity. We lack this grossly in Africa. Are we together now? Yeah. So people collect their salaries. And when they collect their salaries, the moment there is a short supply of that salary for two or three months, they are back because there was no productivity. There was money, but no productivity. Are we together now? Yes. Productivity is a system of increase. In mathematics, we have addition, we have subtraction, we have multiplication. And another name for multiplication, they say find the product of this. And you know that they are talking about multiplication. It's a system of increase. Woe betides any soul that does not understand the law of productivity. The days that are here now, not the days that are coming, will create a level of frustration upon that individual and all connected to that individual. We must understand productivity. God wanted the entire globe saved and he used one son. Productivity. Now he has gotten many sons in glory. The consumer mentality is the mentality that always believes in finishing what you have. Always believes in finishing what you have. It doesn't have to be financed, anything at all. The consumer mentality is the mentality that will always run dry. Always run dry. A mentality that never thinks increase, never thinks addition, never thinks multiplication. When you have a consumer mentality, when you come into the life of a man, you run that man dry. I don't mean a male figure, anybody at all. Are we together now? There are members with consumer mentality. They come to church and run the church dry. It doesn't have to be financially. Anything that comes from your life that does not add or increase is a consumer mentality. Great people are concerned with addition that because of your presence, you become a multiplier factor. Are we together? So your whole family is going down and here you show up and because of you, something happens in that family and begins to multiply. The greatest way to understand productivity is agriculture. Amazing how you can take a seed. Look up everybody. You plant that seed. Are we together now? And then you watch it. That orange seed, just give it a little time. It grows. The orange seed is not productive until it can hold orange enough. Are you seeing that now? Yes. In spite of the wind that will blow some other seeds, it has the stamina. And a few months after maturity, you begin to see oranges everywhere. Watch this. You will pluck the oranges. And after a while, it will start again. And you will pluck some more. 
and there are orange trees and other fruit trees that are older than people. The trees were there before they were born, yet they will still eat of it. That's productivity. Are we together now? No man who is productive becomes poor. No matter what Babylon wants to do or not. No matter what devil. No matter what charm, what cause. Productivity is not an idea for success. It's a weapon. Productivity is a weapon. A man of God who is productive will never have empty pews. A church, a ministry that is productive will never go down. A business that is productive will never see shame. The key is productivity. The key is not wishing. The key is not sentiments. The key is productivity. The ability to convert anything small to become big productivity. The ability to introduce a multiplier factor. I am productive. Who do I use? Come. I am productive to the degree to which I can multiply this gentleman's value, his usefulness. That he comes as a naive young gentleman and I have access to his life. And in six months, in one year, I transform this person by the power of the Holy Spirit. This is productivity. Are we together now? Let me say this respectfully. Any pastor that does not cause the members to increase and to be productive in the days that will come will be ready for empty pews. The days of solidarity based on tribe, based on all this, are over. The determining factor for impact is productivity. We come from the same village, will soon be a joke. We have the same auntie. You are my elder brother, I'm your younger brother. No. People are desperate. He said that in the last days, the mountain of the Lord's house shall be exalted above all other mountains and over the hills. And the people will say, let us flow. Although upwards, but let us flow to that mountain. Are we together? Thank you. What does productivity involve? Let's discuss this quickly. Number one, the first key to productivity is healthy exposure. Write it down. The first key to productivity is exposure. Please, whether you are standing outside, whether, what, if you can listen, listen. If you can write, write. What's the first key? It's impossible to be productive until your mindset is stimulated by a new horizon to life, to God, whatever it is. I was blessed by the testimony of that gentleman. One testimony you were all laughing around. When the guy was doing his best to articulate and piece together every spiritual intelligence. You, you can see the, don't feel bad my friend, but you can see the scarceness of his revelation and access. You can see that he's just throwing anything spiritual. But he said, I want to start from that kindergarten. Give that gentleman two, three months under the correct atmosphere and you will watch a young man rise that will surprise you. You will forget that he was once the person who just came and spoke here. Productivity. Productivity. Anything that enters your hand multiplies. Anything that comes around your life increases. Are we together now? Everybody say exposure. Listen to me. Exposure is not a gift of the Spirit. In fact, exposure is not even a gift of life at all. Exposure is a system where your horizon is expanded. Listen carefully. You will never rise beyond your mindset. I hope you know that. Zaria, hear me. Hear me. Hear me. This is one of the secrets of our limitation. We are limited. We are not bad. We are just limited. That all your life, you have known life to be a particular way. And so you do not know there is more to life. Are you getting what I'm saying now? Most people, their exposure is negative. Party and all of that. That's, how, that's why I said healthy 
exposure. That means there's an unhealthy one. Listen to me. If God wants to lift you and cause you to be productive, the first miracle that happens to your life is He can either shift you geographically or give you access to an environment that begins to expand your understanding. He will introduce a person. He will introduce a system. Or he will translocate you to a region where your mind begins to be adjusted. Listen to me. That's why sometimes you receive miracles you know you didn't pray for. God is breaking that cycle of limitation. There is no basis for receiving when you can. There are many people who cannot. God cannot even tell them certain things. It's not yet a concept that can be received. They don't have a system built within them to receive it. Please listen very carefully. Exposure. I believe is one of the reasons why the knot is very backward. I believe is one of the reasons why the middle belt is the worst part of it. Because our entire family, supported by a lopsided communication of Christianity, has stabilized our mediocrity and kept us within a plane that doesn't even make allowance for growth. Listen to what I'm telling you. The average middle beltan, the average northerner, has an extra project to do in trusting God to break that circle first. Because it is so bad that the slightest show of exposure can even be attacked as extravagance. This is how bad this spirit is. Exposure. 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 The ability to expose you. When God finds out that there is nothing around you that can relate to it, He will translate you to the realm of the spirit and say, still see in any case, I need you to comprehend. That's what he did to Abraham. He kept telling Abraham, you will be a father of many nations. Abraham said, Amen, like we're saying. And God said, I can't work with you. You are, you are empowering delay in your life. And then one time he said, Abraham, come out. You have checked around and there is nothing that looks like. Lift up your eyes. See. Count the stars. He had been looking at the stars, but he never tried counting them. I'm looking for something I can use to, to, to parallel what I want to do in your life. So count the stars. So he will start one, two, three. Oh, God. One, two, three, four, five. Ah, one. God is impossible. That's it. It's a social your CP. I, I have I planted something in you that you can now relate with. He says, and Abraham finally believed God. And it was credited to him for righteousness. Many times we do not have a basis for being blessed because we are limited. We came from a poor background. Now, I'm not insulting you, please. You are born to look like your parents, but you die looking like your decisions. Listen carefully. I understand that you came from a background that may not allow you to rise. But somewhere along your life, you must make up your mind. Unfortunately, many of us make up our minds in an unhealthy way. You just sit and say, this poverty, I'm tired. I must start hustling. You have missed it again. Hmm. Exposure. So, the young carpenter from Galilee. Can anything good come out of Nazareth? And every time he went to pray, his horizons were expanding. You see what Satan did to Jesus? He took him to an exceeding high mountain and said, you have not seen this one, at least not in the flesh. He says, look at it first. Let me expand your mind. Good marketer. When he saw everything, he said, let me make this work easy. It was only a temptation because of what Jesus saw. If Jesus did not see anything, it can be a temptation. Are you getting what I'm teaching you tonight? Everybody say exposure. It is the reason why there is a lot of advancement and there is ease of establishment in areas like, say, Abuja or Lagos and all of that. Do you know why? Because the environment, sociologically speaking and infrastructurally speaking, is developed enough to subconsciously stimulate creativity. 
So you are passing and there's a mall that challenges you. And then they tell you this is the young man that owns it. And subconsciously, your mind continues to bank in challenges until you don't know when you sit down and say, Lord, there has to be something about my life. But in this environment, no matter what level you are, you are still a champion. You see how bad it is? Before or after school, you are still better than many people. Before or after being born again, you are better than many people. You waste your money, they say, no problem, you are better than us. There is nothing that challenges you. So you need a healthy exposure. There are people in their life who never bought cars. And the day you say we are trusting God for a car, they look at you and say, what, what kind of nonsense is this? Must you live with a car? No, you mustn't, but it's better to have a car. Are we together now? Yes. Listen, one of the ways that Satan destroys men is to allow your mediocrity to reach the apex. Then he will now in, he will expose you by himself. That's why you can have a naive lady who never understood anything about life and a young guy can just come and carry her and say, my dear, let me tell you what this is. Let's go to a very big hotel or somewhere and she gets to eat a nice one and say, what is this? This is called this. This is called that. She doesn't know she's getting angry until she leaves that hotel and returns back home. And the mother says, ah, it's ready. Help me pour water on the firewood. Let, let's just conserve it. And suddenly there is an agitation. But because it was wrongly done, she will make up her mind that that experience, I will not rest. She will find a way of going back. Nobody sees something better and rest. When new wine comes, something begins to happen. The old wine becomes tasteless. It's how God expands us. Many of us have never seen the advantage of living a blessed life. You have never really seen a blessed, godly person around you. Please look up, look up, look up, look up. Don't, don't feel insulted. But many of us have not had models of correct, blessed believers. You have seen struggling believers. You have seen believers here and there who are a bit they have today, tomorrow they don't have. You have not seen a portrait. So when the Bible says, blessed is the man that fears the Lord. There's nothing you can, you just, you just think he says, godly is the man. You know how your phone doesn't have some characters. And when you send text messages, it will use something else to replace it. My brothers and my sisters, the mind only begins to conceive when there is a reference. There has to be something that's the reason why men and women of God must challenge themselves, even on this wise, to become worthy references. A ministry that has a prophet will easily have prophets as members because they can see a man prophesy. A ministry that has a millionaire will usually have people. The possibility that you see before you is what you become. That's what Jacob did to the animals. He simulated what he wanted them to become. Are you getting what I'm saying now? Many of you have not seen the excellency of a blessed life. The only thing you have heard about a blessed man, rich men are crooks, rich men are stupid, rich men are obsessed with money. They are the ones who destroy our country. Rich men are corrupt people. And when you hear that kind of thing, your mind has pegged that as the definition of wealth. So God exposes you to a man who is blessed and loves God. And you are seeing a reality that is foreign to your experience. I thought all wealthy people hate God. I thought all wealthy people are indisciplined cooks. Here I'm seeing a man that loves God. Then you have the opportunity to see his offering. You have the opportunity to see his tithes. You have the opportunity to see his prayer. And in it his righteousness endures. He will leave you with a mark. He will go back and say, Mama, I know we are in this hut, but there is a better life. Egypt, I know there is cucumber and there's carrots but there is Canaan my mother is Canaan let's trust God for grace and in the name of Jesus I'm speaking to you may you be the one to lift your family out of this place. please sit down exposure exposure creates dissatisfaction in your heart are we together you never knew that it was possible to pay a child's school fees beforehand. 
Because every time they paid your school fees, you were the last. You never knew that it is possible for somebody to not worry about money. It's not a reality that your mind can ever try to conceive. That there is such a realm where you sit down and the only thing that governs your appetite is the will of God. Not lack. Do you know and do you believe there is such a realm? Please listen to me. Such a realm where you are empowered to be a blessing. You get to a church and you see them struggling. Rain is hitting everyone. And you can just sign a check and say, please, get canopies for these people. Let the name of the Lord continually be exalted. Let this not be what will discourage them. Your resources increasing even as your soul prospers. You cannot be productive until you see the advantage. There must be a system of recognition. You must see what it can do to you. Are we together? I never had the privilege to be around extremely wealthy people, just like most of us. Here and there we had average people. Some of us came from families that were average here and there. But extreme levels of wealth. Notice that this is one of the reasons why many of us, our educational background is very poor till today. We are still fighting that warfare. Let me tell you where it started from. It started because of the kinds of nursery and primary schools we went to. You went to a school that you start on stone. Now, I'm not insulting you. Are we together? Yes. A school where they teach in another language and they translate to you in whatever language you can know. Because that's what is obtainable. Are we together? How you pass your JSC is now that you know it was mercy and favor. Because you were certainly not ready. Now, let me tell you, if you come from that kind of background, you will be surprised. The first thing you have to manage is complex, not assimilation. The moment you find yourself in the company of other people, their confidence will intimidate you. You will have to fail for a long time before you start building. Your own assignment at that point is not even to understand what they are teaching. To manage your complex, just a question they ask you. Stand up and you cannot say your name again. You don't fail because you are bad. You fail because there is a backlog of something you are dealing with. Exposure is powerful. Exposure is powerful. The same way you grew spiritually because you were exposed to people who God had helped. Are you seeing that? When this ministry started by the grace of God, there were so many spiritual people. Someone would get born again in two weeks. Two weeks. When everybody is fasting, you won't have the grace to complain. When everybody is praying, you won't have the grace to be lazy. When there are programs and everybody is praying through the night, you will easily follow suit. Is that true? We are products of our environment. So God needs to grant us access to exposure. Now listen, I want to say something and please let it not hurt you. If for any reason you come from a polygamous family, or any kind of family for that matter that did not model correct fatherhood, correct motherhood, correct brotherly love, you have an extra project to do on yourself to trust God for grace. Are you getting what I'm saying? Let me tell you this. Now, I love my father. I love him with all my heart and thank God for what he has become now. I say this respectfully. He's still alive, so I'm saying it very cautiously. But I love him, but... I do not model his system of fatherhood, especially in his youth. That's because his own father died when he was 10 years. So he spent his entire life hustling. He grew up a bit with his uncle who was a soldier. He was a what? A military man. So what do you think? His whole template was warfare and aggression. That was what he termed progress. And now we happen to be the ones in the scene. And it was terrible, especially being the first son. It was, it was a tug of war. It was almost like fight, to fight between myself and my father. Everything was aggression. You bring cold water for him to wash his hand, he won't say you are wrong. He will slap you. You fall with the whole thing. Then you go to the kitchen and ask somebody they slapped before. How did you manage that situation? Now please... 
Don't you ever see my father, and my father is a born again, loving man right now. He's a healthy and wonderful man. Are we together now? Yes, I respect and I honor him with my life and forever. So don't, don't think that honor your father. I'm not just, he's, a, he's truly a good man. One of the most honest people I've seen in my life. But he was a victim. I have learned by experience that the concept of being bad does not really exist. Everybody is only an executor of his understanding. Because there is no bad dead body and there is no good dead body. There is only a dead body. Are you getting what I'm teaching you now? Yeah. And so that life of aggression, exposure. I didn't want it, but that was all I had seen. And so subconsciously as I started growing, I found out that my approach to life began to reflect that. You don't receive willingly alone. Once you are exposed to a system for a long time, it becomes all you know. That's why most people that complain about leaders, when they get there, they do the same thing. Because while they were complaining, they were becoming it too. Remember Animal Farm? Literature students. That's exactly what happens to people. And so my life started reflecting that. I was unusually aggressive. I said, no, 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 no. Something has to happen to my life. Lord, this cannot be my life. Ah. Light me, Lord. Light me, Lord. Light me, Lord, like a candle. Light me, Lord. Light me, Lord. Light me, Lord, like a candle. Light me, Lord. Light me, Lord. Light me, Lord, like a candle. Light me, Lord. Light me, Lord. It's amazing to what degree we reflect the things that modeled our minds. Whether you like it or not is a different thing. Respectfully speaking, if your mother was a cook and you saw her stealing daddy's money and called it smartness, you will be surprised what you do when you enter a relationship. You can finish praying in tongues right now and while you are praying, you just see 1,000 protruding from a trouser and you would drag it and drag it in the name of the Lord. You are a victim. Everybody say exposure. Zaria people, listen to me. The internet is God's symbol of mercy to the limitations of our territory. I repeat, the internet is God's symbol of mercy to the limitation that comes with our territory. There are things we may never have seen and known, but for the power of the internet. The internet is like a gun. You can use it to destroy yourself or you can use it to build. Many of us, it is the power of the internet that gave us access to messages, to people, to dimensions. Are we together now? Just like some of us, it's the internet that destroyed us and planted wrong seeds in our minds. You can remedy for your lack of exposure. If it is costly to fly physically, let your mind go there. Listen carefully. The most important ingredient in your exposure is not your body, it's your mind. So when your body cannot get there, don't feel bad. Find a way of taking your mind to that location. And this is where the internet becomes a blessing. You don't have the privilege to attend a pastor's conference somewhere to bless your, your, yourself, but your mind can go there. Remember, I've taught you that when your mind gets somewhere, your body must follow. It doesn't matter what the resistance is. Yes, you don't have the privilege to have been born in Lagos. You don't have the privilege to have been born in the U.S. You don't have the privilege to have been born in any of the Western worlds. Apostle, I don't even know the name of my village. The last time I checked, I didn't exactly see it there. That's not the issue. Your body may not be able to go there, but God has orchestrated such that your mind can go there. Everybody around you was a bad father, a wicked man, a bad mother, a wicked woman. And God can just lead you to one 15-minute video on YouTube that translates you into the home of somebody who can re-mentor you and start correcting your wrong ideologies. Everybody say exposure. There's no excuse in our world today 
for remaining small, even financially, there is a system of exposure. There is a system of exposure. There is a system of exposure. Are we together? Number two, thank you. The second key to productivity, please write it down, is creativity and innovation. Creativity and innovation. The second key to productivity. Remember, I told you productivity is a weapon. You don't just fight by prayer alone. You don't just fight by fasting alone. Your productivity is a weapon. As God is exposing you and exposing your mind, you are fighting a warfare that you do not know. It's a warfare for your destiny. While you are exposing yourself, you are exposing it for your children, for your children's children. And then number two, creativity. Write this down. What is creativity? Creativity is the act of turning or transforming your ideas, imaginations, and dreams into reality. Creativity is the act of turning or transforming your ideas, your imaginations, and your dreams into reality. I saw this definition and it was so instructive. It also involves the act of turning your, um, transforming your ideas, imagination, dreams into reality. Full stop. It also involves perceiving the world in new ways. Comma, finding hidden patterns and making connections between seemingly unrelated phenomena. It involves perceiving the world in new ways, finding hidden patterns, making connections between seemingly unrelated phenomena. Look up, please. The first manifestation of the Holy Spirit in the Bible was not as a revealer, but as a creator. There was darkness. Genesis chapter 1, it says, In the beginning... God created the heavens and the earth. And then verse 2 says, Now the earth was dark and void and formless. Is the Hebrew word tohu abohu. Confusion and chaos. And the Bible says the Spirit of God hovered round the face of the waters because creation, recreation was about to start. The first manifestation of the Holy Spirit was as a creative spirit. And listen to me. If you will conquer the king of Tyre, and if you will go up the mountain to bring wood and build the house of God, then you must be creative. The spirit of invention, the grace that can bet realities from the realm of the spirit. Please hear me. Any man that is not creative in this generation will die of hunger or be at the mercy of those who are creators. There is no reason for competition again. Creation is the key. The ability to translate possibilities from the realm of the spirit. Please give us Ephesians chapter 3 and verse 20. The Bible says, Now unto him who is able to do exceedingly abundantly far above all we ask or imagine. The word there is imagine. It says, According to the power that worketh in us. Creativity. Unfortunately, our generation of young people have been stimulated into mental sleep. Our creativity level in this generation is almost zero. Thank God for the curriculum they used to bring those days in primary school. Quantitative reasoning. And uh, what's the other one? Verbal reasoning. This, our lazy generation now doesn't even understand anything that stimulates the mind. I'm not being insulted, but you ask a graduate a simple question. Just something he can think about. I mean, it's not there at all. Creativity is zero. Zero. So we like doing things the way everybody has done. You just carry somebody's project and change your name and adjust figures. Change five to seven. Change this and change address and stamp it straight to community market and present it. Creativity is zero. 
Many businesses. That's why when a business is wrong, many other businesses become wrong too because they don't think. They just copy. You must trust God for the grace. Listen to me. There is a level of creativity that can come upon you and bail your family forever. Are you hearing what I'm saying now? Yes. There is a spirit in man. Man is not an empty body. There is a spirit. And the inspiration, that's the word. From the word inspire. The word inspire does not just mean to prime. It means to magnetize. Like you bring a magnet close to something and you cause another metal to shift because of a magnet. That's the idea of inspiration. That the Holy Spirit, the author of wisdom can come close to you. And in physics we call it resonance. Let's, let's talk a little physics more. Resonance. Are we together now? Yes. That when you use a tuning fork and you hit at a frequency, every other object within that frequency begins to resonate. That's how it is. So the Spirit of God comes and He does something to your spirit man and lifts you. He wants you to bet something. So He comes in that dimension and deep calls on to deep. You are seated in the room. There has to be a way. Lord, my family cannot just... I, I, listen, listen. I don't mean to be a prophet of doom. But let me tell you this. Robots are here to stay. That means jobs are already... Jobs are becoming like typewriter. Did you hear what I said? Jobs are becoming like what? Typewriter. Let's speak economics a little. Hear me. I'm speaking to you by the Spirit of God. I'm speaking in the spirit of Noah, telling you a flood is coming. Join this ark and join it fast. They laughed at Noah for 120 years. He kept telling them a flood is coming. There are more graduates in Nigeria than any level of development between now and the next 50 years can ever employ. Are we together? Masters is the new degree right now. You don't move around that you have a degree. Masters is the new... You go, they apply for a job looking for 80 people. And about 12,000 people will write it. There are people who have finished since 15 years ago. They will eat first before it gets to your turn. So if you are a fresh graduate now, imagine that until 15 or 14 years... Babylon manipulating the system to make sure the saints cry. But there is a way. There is a spirit in man. Listen to me carefully. The, the employment in any nation is private sector driven. There is no nation that the government handles their employment. No. Government has only limited parastatal. Are you getting what I'm saying now? And because they are working on cutting costs, usually they will make sure that as much as possible they cut costs. The employment rate in any nation is private sector driven. That means the more businesses you have, the more entrepreneurs you have, then they can be able to absorb people. Unfortunately, Technology and information has replaced men. There is no reason why I should employ 1,000 people when I can employ 5 people and 5 computers. 737 of GT Bank alone made sure it blessed people, one of their most successful products. But with that, many people may never get a job again. Because it was very efficient. Every businessman does business for profit. I hope you know bank is business. Bank is not government property. It's somebody's business. Look at graduates now. All around. There is nothing. Because there is a system. And please listen to what I'm saying. Because when a father does not have something that brings resources. And mother does not have something that brings resources. They will both suffer and the children will suffer. Listen for the sake of your children. My brothers and my sisters, don't listen just for yourself. Let us rid ourselves of this selfishness. It doesn't matter. It doesn't take very long before your child comes. And then the reality will dawn on you. 
And while that is happening, Satan is manipulating the economy to make sure the prices of things go high. It's a double-edged sword. So that whatever direction you come from, you will be attacked. Listen. The average salary within this system is not more than twenty to 30,000. Listen carefully. Am I telling the truth? There are only few places that can employ people in Zaria. Let me use Zaria. I'm talking to the whole world, but please permit my bias. Let me just address my people a little bit. The average salary is twenty to 30,000. Anything more than that is uh, until you have any federal government thing. And we know, no matter how careful you are in this life, twenty to 30,000 will not do you anything. No matter how stingy and greedy and even wicked, 20,000 will not be enough. Even if you are a thief, you will need more than that to steal. Calculate the amount to buy weapons, dress, and if more than that already. So no matter how you go around it, you are still in trouble by default. Now watch this. So you have a family of 10 people. How many people? Minus father or mother. And then one person out of the six graduates now manages to get a job of 20,000. And everybody saying, oh yeah, oh, now that God has blessed you, we were there for you. 20,000 divided by 10. So why won't your prayer life be affected? Why will you be able to pray? Where will you get the resources to marry? No, not marry. Watch this. Where will you get the resources to marry? I'm being sincere with you. Marriage in Nigeria at any level is not cheap. Are, are we together now? Don't blackmail any territory. Marriage everywhere today is not cheap. You want to marry? You are discouraged yourself. The wife is discouraged herself. Your destiny is, is hanging in the balance. Because nothing can, Remember you are born again. Remember you are filled with the spirit of God. And Satan says exactly. This is how I want to manipulate the economy. Please listen my brothers and sisters. I am telling you this thing to bail you out. So that you will have time. By the time this happens. Members are not able to bring offerings. Not able to bring tithes. And that means that projects cannot be executed and the man of God himself is stranded. So he has to invent another ungodly way. Are you getting it now? By manipulation. Remember, he didn't plan to be bad. The pressure, the rent on the auditorium, the rent on all of this. There are bills to pay, TV ministry. And he has to invent another theology that can supply The solution, and I speak to you by the spirit of prophecy, is creativity. Listen to me. Creativity and innovation. There is a spirit in man. My brothers and sisters, there is a spirit in man. There are men and women that must arise. Let us not pray in tongues for nothing. We are not just praying in tongues to throw one another on the ground. The world does not understand that language. The language that conquers Babylon is bringing something that dumbfounds principalities and powers. Even Paul got to a place where it was his being a Pharisee, his exceptional quality of knowledge that bailed him out. Right now, everybody laughs at the church because it looks like the church is a place for daft people and idiots. People who don't have any brain. Is that true? The spirit of revival is not only the spirit of prayer. The spirit of revival is not only the spirit of fasting. The spirit of revival is the grace for witty inventions on common manifestations of the hand of God. Listen, let me tell you this. Listen to me. Let me say this and I, I, I don't know if I will sound proud, but please forgive me. Forgive me. When I started banking, I was taught that there are certain transactions you cannot do until you are there by yourself to sign your signature. As God increased me, I found out that it's not true. That rule was only for some people. 
Are you getting the point now? There are transactions today that I do that the bank manager himself is the one that does it. Now listen very carefully. I'm not saying this to boast. I'm not saying this to brag. I'm telling you when you are at the edge of creativity, there are rules that will be broken for you and your children. I told you about BVN. I didn't have the time to do BVN. I needed to do BVN in the bank and the, you know the queue, I told them, I said, I don't have this time. And they gave me time, 8.30. I went to the bank and they opened the bank for me. I sat down and did BVN. Is there anything, sir? Would you, are you happy? Would you like a drink? I said, ah, look at how unfair life can be. Listen to me. This is not some boasting or bragging. I want you to be apostolic in your understanding. This is not about money at all. This is about your soul and the gospel. Are we together now? Let us not keep our children in captivity, my brothers and my sisters. Standing between your parents and your children is you. We are that bridge. You can transfer what you receive. Or you can say, Lord, let me be the one to suffer it. Let my child not go through what I've gone through again. And God says, are you willing to be this savior for your family? And you say, Lord, I'm available. Are we together now? Please hear what I'm saying. Nobody will ever be coerced or manipulated in this ministry to bring one naira for anything to happen in the gospel. No, 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 no. It will be wicked. And only a wicked man of God will continue to receive seeds from people and they continue to bless him and not be... This is, this is where, sincerely speaking, I have a little challenge with we men of God. We continue to receive and collect from people but never empower them. It's wickedness. It's a scam. Do you know how available people will be when they are financially free? Financial freedom will help you know that there are not many things to be done in life. Most of the distraction is the pursuit for money. It is vain to wake up in the morning and to sleep late in the night only to eat the bread of sorrow but he gives his beloved sleep. It's impossible to, pay, to pray three, four, five hours every day when your pocket is crying. It's not true. Not in this country. We release the sound of the heavens, the sound of creation, Yahweh is King. We release the sound of the heavens, the sound of creation, Yahweh is King. We release the sound of the heavens, the sound of creation, Yahweh is King. We cry holy, holy, holy unto Yeshua, Shekinah is king. Yahweh, Yahweh. Eh, 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 eh. Yahweh. Creativity, 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 that God will anoint people to be creative, do new things or old things in new ways, that you set a pace. My brothers and my sisters, let no man deceive you that there is poverty in Zaria. No, it's just that the avenue to find expression is smaller. But there are opportunities beyond your imagination. Every day, millions of Naira continue to exchange hands in this city by only a few people. Creativity. Creativity is not in the realm of men. You don't get creativity through education. Creativity is of the spirit. There is a spirit in man. What were you filled with the Holy Ghost for? There is a spirit in man. Jesus revealed a new way of saving men. 
Until then we use the blood of bulls. But Jesus came and showed us that the price can be paid once and for all. Never did they know that the Holy Ghost could come and stay on men. He would come and go. But a new thing came. He said, behold, I do a new thing. Remember not the former things. Listen. The instrument of survival in our generation today will be the spirit of creativity. The grace for uncommon inventions. I'm telling you this. Noah won, just like I'm warning. Noah won, just like I'm warning. And told them the rain is coming. I tell you, there is a financial holocaust that is hitting people. The Bible says it. That the earth of men will be brass and under will be iron. But there are people who will be preserved. A remnant that will be preserved. I came out this morning. I usually don't come out. And I decided to just come out in the afternoon. I didn't know it was this hot. When I came out and the, way, the, the sun, it was so serious. I just stood and I looked. I said, my God. And I said, this is my message, oh Lord. This is exactly what is going to happen to people. Think of what happens when you stand in the sun for long. Headache, pain. Yet there are people who will have to be exposed to those things. And do you know the pain? When you hold all your children together and say, Junior, stand in this sun with me. And Junior is saying, is this how life was meant to be? And Satan now looks at him and says, Junior, come. There is a way out. And Gino says, Daddy, since you cannot provide, you are not a father. Our children will be more audacious than us. Their generation has made them audacious. So if you are a father, you have to be a father indeed. A mother indeed. Otherwise, we will lose our children. And the law courts have been empowered to make sure you cannot take care of the child. They say, let's take care of your child. Meaning whatever we teach him, provided we are the ones feeding him. No government will feed my child. In the name of Jesus. No. No. I reject it. Koinonia will never stand in front of any government office waiting to receive welfare at the expense of the gospel, at the expense of the truth. But this will be a blind, foolish boast until you understand the power of creativity. Listen very carefully. God is teaching us something tonight that will save us. Exposure. Creativity. The mind that thinks. The mind that works. Spirit inspired mind. The mind that can bet solutions from the realm of the spirit. Bet solutions. I was sharing with someone this afternoon of a woman that used to make, I don't know what she makes now, 500,000 in Abuja here. Jobs did not come and everything did not come and she was praying and God gave her an idea. And she went and met certain families that she can teach their children well. And she's not doing a general extramoral lesson. It's a VIP extramoral lesson. And it started like two children, three children, right in her house. And those students were behaving exceptionally well. But more than that, she was teaching them character character and then she will play koinonia messages too these children were changing in remarkable ways and the parents started recommending their circle of influence that's always what happens when you penetrate one circle they will call the others like them to you and like play like play this woman would collect ten thousand naira per month as at the time that i was talking with her she had like 50 children only God knows how much he has now. The gates of destiny will not open on its own. You force it. He said right from the days of John the Baptist and until now, the kingdom suffered violence and is the violence that will take it by force. The spirit of invention. Listen to me. If you stay with the Holy Spirit and say, Lord, let something from the throne room Come upon my mind for my generation. God can put something on your mind. Something on your mind. And change your life. Change your life. I saw a picture on the internet one day. 
the person's cloth, they wrote four hundred dollars. Then his his tie, they wrote twenty dollars, and then his head, they wrote zero dollars. Are we together? That's a picture of our generation. Packaging. And there is nothing from the realm of the spirit. And I told you that resources only follow productivity. Is God blessing us? I'm already very proud and happy about many of us that God is granting grace. Not just to hustle, but to think. This, this praying in tongues must translate into blessing everything. It's not only power to shake. No. It must come upon your mind. Please lay your heart on your head in the next two, three minutes. And I'd like you to pray. And say, Lord, let something come from heaven. Zakatoske parakata. From heaven, oh God. A creative idea from the throne room that I will have the boldness and the courage to execute that will change my life. Please pray. Please pray. Sabra nekatala kotosa siyada. Embre katekatosa la kapros kateba hafarias. Sabranda skataba ruka tosa debelekos. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Creativity. Everybody writes books, but there is a way that God can anoint you to write one book in a certain way. And that book will bless people creativity. Koinonia messages today are blessing people because of the power of creativity. God gave an instruction and said, while people, the regular way is to have message stands at the end of a service and come and pick up. And God says, no, I will do it differently. Don't sell the teachings. I'm not saying selling teachings are wrong. But he said, just put them on, on Facebook. And the angel of the Lord will take them to nations. That one creative idea. There are ladies here, you can have a creative idea. Listen. When you solve the problem of kings, you will eat with them. You, solve, you will eat with whatever level. Whoever's level you solve their problem, that's the, the realm you will eat at. Listen, there are some of you here, God can anoint you and put grace on you. You will design clothes that will, the person who will call you to surprise you. You will just hear a call and they will say, who is this? You say, come. Are you the one who brought this design? Come. It's not about many customers. It's about quality people. There are men that represent nations. Listen. Listen. I want you to start solving the problem of kings. You have done well to solve the problem of mean men. That God will empower you to solve the problem of kings. 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 Gentiles have already come to your light. It's time for their kings to come. Their kings to come. Is it not in the Bible that kings will entreat your favor? Kings. Kings. That God will put something on your mind. On your mind. Grace. I heard about somebody. Please sit down. We'll soon pray. Sit down. I heard about a gentleman, true story, and I was sharing it with someone this afternoon. He sat down and this guy was going through a lot of pain. And he kept praying and crying before God. And the next thing he saw a mowing machine, machine that cuts grasses. And he had some little savings. And he went and bought it. When he bought it, he went to knock the gate of a very wealthy man who has a big land. And said, sir, I'm a young man. I'm a graduate. It's just that I didn't have um, any, uh, you know, no employment. And I just bought a machine. I know that there are young boys that cut grasses, but my machine, I can mow it down and then pack everything. And the man looked at him and laughed. 
and said, I'm impressed. These are the kind of men I want. You're welcome. Come in. And he came in and mowed the man's grasses. He was so well. And he told him that not only the grasses, I can also trim the flowers. Listen, the person I'm telling you today is a millionaire. He deals in everything that has to do with it. He bought these machines. They mow houses for wealthy people and then they sell flowers. Flowers. They, to the point that he even imports certain varieties from a crying graduate to a praying one. And something comes from heaven and changes your life. For as long as we sit down and continue to tell ourselves one day it go better, my brothers and my sisters, let me tell you, you will find out that time is going and the only thing increasing in your life is your age. Are we together? I know a woman a dear precious woman in Lagos. Every time I have the privilege to go there and around that ministry, I'm very quick to order her, her products. Health drinks. Completely organic. 100%. Because the need to live long and live healthy. You see, when you are poor, it's not a concern. Because the work you do will not even allow fats to remain in your body and all of this. But by the time God helps you small, you find out that at a level it's a serious concern. And this, this woman started selling health drinks. And, you know, beautifully packaged. And only God knows how much she makes. There's a lady from Joss, a precious lady. She may be listening now. She came for Koinonia here with a product. She worked for somebody and came and God gave her ideas, a combination for weight loss, healthy, organic weight loss products that is cheaper and affordable, 100% organic. And that lady blessed. I saw it. I was so impressed. When I went to Joss, I told the lady, I said, put it and take it and go and give my parents. Let them take it and let them be blessed. The goal is not far from you. When the spirit of creativity comes on you, you will see what others don't see. It's true. Anything can bless. It depends on how it is served. Are we together? There's one mama that sells kunu. Kunu, sorry for those of you who are not in the north. It's a drink, a local you know, drink that we take a lot here. I tell you, there's a woman that sells that and the way she does it. Even, you know, sometimes you just want to get all of these things and she can supply you whether a gallon or whatever it is. Please, my brothers and my sisters, lay your hand on your head again and command creativity to work for you. Rebuke laziness. Rebuke excuses. There has to be a way out of it. The warfare that is executed through creativity. Only creative men can survive upon that mountain. There is a way out. There is a way out. There has to be a way out of struggling. Hallelujah. Please sit down. Let me tie it up somewhere so that we'll round up for tonight. Creativity. Creativity. The third key to productivity. One is exposure. Two is creativity and innovation. Number three is competence. You want to be productive. The third key is competence. The ability to standardize your results. Hmm. Competence. The ability to standardize your results, maintain quality, predictable quality. Predictable quality. Anything that comes from you has a predictable expectation. I know if you are a lesson teacher, I already know what a child will get because you are there. If you are a chef, I already know. The food cannot be delicious today and nonsense tomorrow. You are not competent. Competent is a product of mastery. The mastery of the laws that govern that operation. Predictable competence. Listen to me. When your results are not standardized, kings will not come to you. 
Kings do not come to a fluctuated result. Stability for kings mean mastery. So when you stabilize and standardize your results, whether spiritually, intellectually, or otherwise, you call the attention of kings. The leaders in any industry are men who have standardized their results. You cannot keep fluctuating forever. As a man of God, as a businessman, as a career person, there must be a level of standardized results. Everybody say competence. Be strict on yourself. Set a high standard on yourself. Don't celebrate mediocrity. Just because you do something small, challenge yourself. Think global, think global, think global. You can start small, but let your mind be global. Are we together? I was listening to one of Dr. Miles Munro's mentees. And he was sharing a story that when Dr. Miles was alive, he looked at him one day. And he called his name and he says, young man, you have a fabulous grace. You are charismatic, but you are not, you are not vocal and articulate. And if you want to go into the communications industry, you have to be vocal and articulate. The gentleman came from a background of all these yo-yo boys. And so they just speak slangs all around. And he said, no, if you want to talk to presidents and talk to great people, you want them to call your attention, then you must pay the price to learn. And he says, wow, he was touched. And he made up his mind that he was going to take an extra program to work on himself. He went that far. And that gentleman today is the one who heads Miles Monroe's church, Dr. Burroughs. He made up his mind that he was going to develop himself. Learn to delay gratification and insist until you are competent. Don't wear tomorrow's clothes today. You walk naked tomorrow. Don't eat tomorrow's food today. You will die of hunger tomorrow. Don't be ashamed of rising gradually, but insist. Insist. I got to find out that a number of our precious ladies here are fashion designers. And for one of them, when I got to see what she does, I was blown away. I was, I was, so, I was impressed beyond imagination. I said, you mean you do this? She said, yes. I said, no, if this is what you do, then the sky is your limit. The world needs to know that you do this. Listen, let me tell you. When you are competent, don't be afraid to let the world know that I am here. You bring embarrassment to yourself and all those who are connected to you when you have not done your assignment and then you are calling the attention of the world. The fig tree had no fruit, but it was calling the attention of Jesus. When Jesus came hungry, he caused it. That's what will happen to any man that calls the attention of the world when you are not ready. But when you are ready and you've done your homework, please stand tall and tell the world that with all humility, God has put something here. Come and see. That's why we boldly open up and we tell people, God is doing something great in Zaria. Come and see. When I travel by the grace of God to go for ministrations, I go with confidence. I know that the people will never be the same. Because the message is powerful. And there is grace that backs the message. There's nothing the devil will do about it forever. That's why I continue to train and challenge you. My brothers and my sisters, when you become competent, the kings of Zaria will call you. When you become competent, you can be in Zaria and the kings of Abuja will call you. The kings of everywhere will call you. They have not called you because they are still studying you. And they are noticing the fluctuations around your results. Standardize your results and watch the desperation of kings. Is God speaking to us? Be competent. Don't be small. Oh, I'm a chef. I'm a chef. What do you do? Just because you can eat your food does not mean that's the food of kings. Challenge yourself. Are we together now?
One time, a great man was celebrating his birthday and they just thought to make him a nice cloth. And my tailor was called upon and told to sew for that man. A very, very big and wealthy man. And then he was encouraged to do a good job. And I'm sure he may be listening now. And when he sold the clothes for that man, from that time, that man started calling him. Now he asked him, I heard recently again, to make another set of clothes. Let me tell you, competence is addictive. When people meet competent people, they don't easily let them go. No, there are not many competent people in the world. You can only complain for a while, you will come back. Be so competent that you become an endangered species. I remember years ago, a dear woman was getting married in Zaria and she went to bring in a, uh, what do you call this people that? Makeup artist from Kano. And I asked a question. I said, does that mean there is not one of my dear people here that is an exceptional makeup artist? Who will like you to ruin her face on her wedding day? The wedding day is not the day of trial and error. If you are not competent, provable competence, kings and queens will not call you. Listen, when you become competent, you can name your price. And the world will still say thank you. Is God blessing you? Competence. You need to shake off poverty. Don't just sit down and say, oh God... Um, now that the job is not coming or what I read, no. God is giving you a mind that can sit down. Listen, Koinonia, I told you that I will never pastor a people who are born again and filled with the Holy Spirit but poor and broke and mediocre. I will not be that man of God. For as long as you are under this grace, you must be balanced. And that includes your finances. I trust God for times when by the grace of God, your children can come and at age 10, they are happy. They are focusing on matters of destiny. You are not waiting for them to become 18 years fast so that they will marry and come and pay you back. This is the place of encounter. That's what God is doing in your life tonight. This is the place of surrender. Do to me what you want. This is the place. Where your life is changed. Listen. Some of us, our parents may have failed. But turn them into a success by being successful. So that they can say, my assignment was to give birth to you. And since I gave birth to you, I may have failed in every other thing. But because you arrived successfully, your success has turned me back to a success. The mother of Jabez called him Jabez because of sorrow. I don't know what else she called him when he, become, he became an honorable man. There are names that are given to you when you are blessed. Your parents will find names. And coin names that represent the excitement you have created in their spirits. Are we together? Being in Zaria is not a cause. Being in the north is not a cause. Being a Nigerian is not a cause. And the secret is not running to Canada. The secret is not running to Europe. There are people under bridges in all of these nations. It is the grace that follows you and the intelligence that God gives you. Are we together? By the time we are building our international headquarters, these are, there are people here that will single-handedly by the Spirit of God, say, Apostle, look, we are writing this. Let this not be an issue. Not moral support. No. That people are here who will be so blessed and sign a million Bibles and say, please take them to the Northeast. Noiseless impact. Are we together now? 
There are many of our children in this ministry. Some of them, you see them come, and many of them is only God that supplies for their daily bread, and is only God that takes care of them. When will God bless you to a point that one day you look at one child and say, young man, you were about to fall, but because I came. Ah, I am alive. That was changed. Thank you for giving to the Lord. I am so glad you came. You know your impact by what people do around your birthdays. That you have to remind people that it's your birthday is a sign that your destiny is closed. People should be excited and know that my God, this blessing to my life, what an opportunity to celebrate Him. There are people today, you still look at their grave and their grave is a sermon. You can stand on their grave and live inspired. He came, he saw, he conquered. Productivity. The ability to trust God for an innovative spirit. Listen. Turn your ideas to products and services. You are only worthy of reward when your ideas become products and services. Served with excellence until they become products and services, you are only worthy of commendation, not reward. I cook once in a while. I'm very good, but that's just how I am. Hey, that means that the financial squalor that is coming will meet up with you. I don't know what the best restaurant in this city is. I don't know. But I thank God that there are people rising already. Here and there. It is my goal and my prayer that the best of the best of the best of the best of every level of productivity will come out from this house. It's not in a competitive manner. Listen. One of the benefits of productivity is the privilege of influence. The moment you are productive and you lead a field, you are given grace to mentor, to build, to set the rules that guide the understanding of other people. And this is one of the keys to kingdom advance. You never become influential as a mediocre. It is when you, when you set the standard and you lead the field. Are we together? You must challenge yourself. I vowed a vow to myself while preparing for this meeting. I said, Apostle, you have not started. Oh, you have not started. The trickles of results that God has given, praise God for it. But Mr. Man, it's time to get to gear two. And do something higher and greater. It is time for a certain levels of graces. I was praying and I said, Lord, give me the anointing for three diseases. One, cancer. Two, HIV. We have seen it in pockets, but I mean that a signature upon your life. This is what money cannot buy. Lord, grant that grace. Let it not be by mistake again. I don't want people to come and testify and say I was healed of cancer. Apostle laid hands and I said, I'm not even sure. No. I want a realm where we know that you came here and we can smile and say, Mr. Man, dust your vision. Put your books back in order because you are walking away free. There is a grace. It's not out of jealousy or a need. No, 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 no. It is how you become a blessing. And then kings will come to you and say, our money means nothing in the face of this situation. And you tell them, there is a system in this kingdom that can help men. The little grace that God has given me, I am blessed and humbled. As I see it change the lives of people. When people come with situations that I know are within the grace that God has given me, I'm excited. I, I feel happy for them because I know they are coming back with a testimony. 
if that does not happen to you, what kind of man of God do you want to become? When you become a conventional man of God, you will be a competitive man of God, a jealous man of God, an angry man of God, and eventually a backsliding man of God. But there is a height, an exceeding high mountain, where God keeps you. And from that mountain, you can tell people, look at what Jesus can do. Say, don't mention Jesus. Say, that's all I know. And they say, if we drive him, we're in trouble. So we have to leave you there. And you shout it at the rooftop. We raise your banner high. We shine your light so bright. We sing in honor of you. Lord, we will raise your banner high. We shine your light so bright. We sing in honor of you. That's the anthem of our generation. Productivity, the ability to be useful, the ability to be needed, the ability to force a space for yourself for the sake of the kingdom in the table of destiny. You may not have been born with that privilege, but my brother and my sister, let me tell you this. There are men and women who did not have any advantage, but they made up their minds that they will challenge themselves. That out of Zaria, God will spring forth something that will shift this nation. Men and women who defy unemployment. Men and women who defy mediocrity. And your productivity will open the gate and the king of Tyre will watch you and he will pass and sit on that mountain and call for nations to come and they will come. Listen to me. We are going to have a few minutes to pray. And just where you are, I'd like you to pray. Are we together now? Worship team, just give us, just play something for us. And then you pray. You are going to cry for your destiny. Tonight's prayer, you are not interceding for anybody. You are saying, Lord, there has to be something uncommon in my life. I'm tired of mediocrity. I'm tired of having what everybody has. It is the reason for jealousy. It is the reason for envy. Lord, put something upon my life. Something uncommon. Are you ready to pray? Expose my mind. Grant me the grace to be creative. Grant me the grace to be competent. The NS expectation of creation awaited the manifestation of God. No excuse for poverty, no excuse for failure, no excuse for mediocrity. Lord, I cancel those excuses tonight. I cancel those excuses. I cancel those excuses. I have a mind that thinks, I have a spirit that can think. There is a spirit in man. And the inspiration of the Almighty can make men of understanding. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Listen. I want you to cause the spirit of laziness 
laziness, physical laziness, mental laziness. Whatever will be, will be. I like you to receive the spirit of aggressive pursuit. Aggressive pursuit. One door closes, you force another one to open. Lift your voice and pray. Lord, I'm tired of giving and choosing. Outside, pray. Inside, pray. Those following online, pray. The sea shall be mighty upon earth. The sea shall be mighty upon earth. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Listen. We are praying two more prayer points and we are done. I believe in diversification, but I also believe in mastery. You are going to pray, Lord, what is that one thing? The area you want me to be a master in, incontestable, unarguable, reveal to me. Lift your voice and pray. Lord, is it agriculture? Lord, is it finance? Is it in my career? Is it in the academia? I cry for the spirit of revelation. Show me, oh God, the one thing that will set me apart and bring honor to your name through my life. Please pray. Concentrate and pray. Concentrate and pray. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Look up, please. One book that was written by T.D. Jakes, Woman Thou Art Loose, One Idea from Heaven. He wrote that book and it changed his life and set precedence for a conference that is one of the premier world conferences today for women. One book, Purpose Driven Life, that a man wrote, changed and turned his life around. One idea called Uber in an app that was invented far away from Africa is working like fire here in Africa. What if God gives you the cure for AIDS? What if, do you know that I found out that there is no sickness on earth now that does not have a medical cure? I mean that has been found. HIV is not incurable. I mean medically. I, I'm not pleased with Due respect to the medical council and all the medical people. These are my personal opinions. I'm not speaking on behalf of the ministry, nor am I speaking on behalf of the nation. I'm telling you by spiritual revelation and by intelligence that there is a cure for it. There is a cure for cancer. There is a cure for all these things. The only problem is that those who have found the cure have not learned the systems. And because you belong to a harsh world and a harsh environment, that this, most of these things were in many respects intentionally manipulated to victimize Africa. So an individual that rises like that will be fought over. But there are cures. Not one, not two. I have spoken personally with people that have these cures. Let me tell you sincerely. Are you ready to pray? Lord, that one thing that you put upon my life that will take the sorrow of lack and want forever that I can leave something for my children's children. Please pray. Hey, 
last prayer point and we are done for tonight. Take my eyes to the problem that holds my wealth. Take my eyes. Don't run away from problems. Take my eyes. Show me, oh God, in life and destiny, where is the problem? Show me the Goliath that my throne is connected to. I'm not afraid to face that Goliath. It may take time, but I will prevail. Lift your eyes and pray. Lift your voice and pray. Lord, take my eyes, take my mind, take me to the problem, the issue that I can solve, that will bring me to my financial cover, that will take my family out of a realm of obscurity and mediocrity. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I shared with you, listen, I shared with you some time here about a dear man of God who was going to pray for me. I, you know, just went, sowed a seed into his life, and then he looked at me and it was time for him to pray for me. And he said, Oh God, create a problem that only him can solve. You know, I stood there with my heart that is for the body of Christ. I said, I don't know if I like this kind of prayer. I mean, I don't like things that try to outshine people. I'm not that kind of person. And so what kind of prayer is this? But the man had prayed his prayer. But when I sat down and I thought about it, I knew that he was not speaking from a standpoint of jealousy. Listen to me. Your similarity, Mike Modoc says, creates your comfort. It is your difference and your uniqueness that creates your reward. Nobody will pay you for being like another person. They will only reward you for being unique. There can be 20 of you in a city, but you can stand out. The same way there are millions of men of God across the earth, but there can be a unique imprint of God's grace upon your life. Are we together now? I decree in the name of Jesus Christ, the grace that wakes people up in the night and shows them witty inventions may that grace rest upon you let me pray it again the grace that wakes people then the secret was revealed to Daniel in the night. Then the secret, there is a grace that taps men in the night and say, wake up, your destiny is about to rise. May that grace speak over your life. Listen to me, I decree and declare that every fear of failure, whatever is keeping you down, People will laugh at me if I fail. How can I take this step? I curse that spirit in the name of Jesus. For those of you honestly trusting God for capital, that you know that you have sincerely done your homework, you just need that push. I stand by the anointing of the Holy Spirit and I declare, in a way you cannot explain, I channel resources to you. I channel resources from the ministry of destiny helpers. I channel strange resources to you in the name of Jesus Christ. There are some of you, your lifting will require a networking of like minds. 
I connect you to similar minds. In the name of Jesus Christ. There are some of you, you are already doing great things. But you just need the courage to scale up to a level that becomes enviable. Both the courage and the grace, I release it upon you now. Listen, there are some of you, God is calling to dimensions that people fear going there. Because nobody has gone there and succeeded. I exempt you and I declare you will succeed. For some of you, this innovation will come in dreams. You will lie down to sleep and your whole sleep will be a dream. You will wake up and do exactly what you saw and prosper. In the name of Jesus Christ. I declare that from tonight. That between now and next week. That everybody under the sound of my voice here must find an area in his life where you can channel energy to be blessed in the name of Jesus Christ and let me pray finally your soul will never go down because of money your work with God your passion for the things of God your sense of honor your sense of submission your, your sense of recognition of the authority of God will never deplete while you rise. In the name of Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Let me tell you, you are going to hear touching testimonies from this prayer that I prayed. It's true. Give Jesus praise. Father, we bless you. In the name of Jesus Christ. Please, if you can, stand on your feet, everyone, inside and outside. If you can, please be up standing on your feet. I want to pray for people who came here, some from within this town and some from outside this town. And you're saying, Apostle, I have never truly made a commitment for Jesus Christ. I've heard the things that you have said. I may not have come from a family that loved the Lord. But I sense from your teaching that God is separating me because he wants me to be a savior and a deliverer. Whether you are in overflow one, two, three, or the main auditorium here, you've seen what God has done. You've heard the word. And you've known that it's not just about money and influence, but it's about the soul of men. And the purposes of the kingdom. Wherever you are. You are giving your heart to Jesus for the first time. Or you are saying apostle I just want to rededicate my life. I know that I need Jesus. Please wherever you are. Except for overflow 3. Because of time I may request that you just move to the front of your projector stand. But overflow 1, 2, 3. Run like there's fire on the mountain. And make your way to the front here. I want to lead you to Jesus. Quickly. 1. I'll just count 1 to 5 and we're done. This is an issue of destiny. Two. Please clear the way for them as they come. Please be upstanding. Be upstanding because of space. Thank you. Please be upstanding. Three. Are you still coming? Win that war tonight. Make up your mind that I don't want my life to continue like this. Jesus is calling you. Rebels, don't, don't come to God. They run away from Him. So that you are on your way coming to Jesus is a sign that you are not a rebel. It doesn't matter what you have done or you have not done. If you come to Jesus, he will in no wise cast away. Overflow 2, are you coming? Quickly, quickly, make your way to the front. Those online following us from whatever nation of the world, you can connect. Making this prayer from the depth of your heart, you're not reciting a poem. I still believe there are a few more people that need to come. Please hurry up, our time is gone. Let tonight be the night of destiny. Let tonight be the night of destiny. No one will force you. No one will beat you. No one will stop you. But you know it by the spirit that God is calling you. And you know that this is a Kairos moment. It's a defining moment for your life. Please make your way quickly. Make your way quickly. Hallelujah. I want to celebrate and thank all of you who summoned the courage to come here. 
those that overflow three and the thousands of people scattered around around the nations of the earth making this decision i want you to know that this is a real decision you're not just reciting or chanting a poem jesus is here and he's ready to give you a new beginning are we together please raise your right hand and i want you to say to say this after me say lord jesus say it again lord jesus i love you with all my heart and i believe that you are the son of god this night i have heard your word and i declare that from tonight and forever you are my lord you are my savior i receive the abundance of grace the gift of righteousness and the life of god from today i go forward ever and backward never in the name of jesus keep your hands lifted let me pray for you jesus thank you thank you for these precious precious people you have brought by your spirit to yourself you have called them because you want to give them new beginnings from tonight and i pray in the name of jesus that you will protect and preserve them that they will continue to go from glory to glory loving you and serving the purposes of your kingdom lord i pray by extension over the thousands and probably millions of people around the world who are listening right now and will be listening i pray in the name of jesus that this prayer that they make let it translate into their salvation in the name of jesus i bless you i pray that the keeping grace rests upon you in the name of jesus christ i pray amen and amen god bless you now please i want you to follow there's a gentleman waving his hands all of you please in concert just follow this gentleman they'll lead you to a group of people and they will just give you a few information and direct you afterwards praise the lord